What's up, player? What's up? What What's going do? on? Chilling, man. Oh, we're going? If you want. I mean, this, this can be sound Let's check. go, dude. Let's fucking roll. Let's ride. Dude, you are the fucking <sighs> man. You rode. How long did you... What? I how just, much time did you spend driving? I woke up in North Carolina this morning, bro. Did just you drove really? the whole way, got here, sat down, rip the cast. I was surprised. That's how we do it. That was a, that was a call. I was surprised. I was, when you called me today... You're like, I don't know, we'll see how we feel. I was like, oh, maybe he'll call me around four. I was like, there's no fucking way yeah, yeah, I want to yeah. do a podcast. I'm ready. The fact that you wanted to rip it, I was like, okay. Okay. I'm charged up, bro. I'm actually weirdly amped right I'm all right. Now. <laughs> really? We'll see. We'll see how I feel. I'm amped, bro. What are you amped about? I'm, dude, I'm on a, I've just been getting so much shit done. Nice. I bugged on productivity the last like two weeks. You should have seen yesterday. What'd you me. do? Uh, so we got fucked. Me, O'Connor, and Beezer. We're down in North Carolina. You're not talking about productivity, Doing right? Stand up. <laughs> we got fogged up Saturday night. So then yesterday on the drive back, we literally got out of Raleigh like one hour, and we were like, "We can't." I, I was like, "I can't do this." You can't guys, drive. you guys, we were parked the to drive. Rolls. We just stopped the fucking car and just went got a hotel. We in the rolls. No, we took O'Connor's. Oh, we took O'Connor's BMW <laughs> SUV that his aunt from Connecticut gave him. Stop. Yeah, his aunt. I was like, where'd you get this thing? He's like, my aunt gave it to me. He says aunt. He says aunt. That's hilarious. <laughs> that's that's a come up for the team, dude. Yeah. Big fucking BMW SUV. For the from, squad? From the rich aunt. That's that's what's up. From O'Contact's aunt. What year are you talking? Uh, she Probably like a 12, 13. That's what's up. That's swag. Yeah. That's a piece of junk to Connecticut elite. I mean, if you're if you live in Greenwich Village and you're from, you know, sure. O'Con- he, he's used to fucking yachts, <laughs> you know. Also, the music, the speakers are broken. So oh, so there's no music. We had there? a Bose, like Beats pill. Why doesn't he sit sp- on the dash? Why doesn't he spring and get the speakers fixed? I don't know. A contact's got a lot going on. True, dude. he's telling me he, he left died. a, he a donut on his toilet for like or pizza yeah, yeah, crust yeah. on his toilet for six. He months. needs the he needs his aunt. He should call his aunt. Let me pimp his ride. You should. I'll take it to Pet Boys and pimp his ride. Pimp it out. That'd be awesome. It's a nice car. Um, yeah, it's a luxury, yeah. but yeah, we 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 couldn't. We drove like maybe an hour. Who was at the and wheel? Was, I was. And it was just you like, pushed bro. Rig, bro. Yeah, I was pushing the rig. How'd you feel in the big body fucking BMW? It was heavy. It was very. It was a heavy fucking car. Yeah. Yeah. But so, yeah, it was it was pretty sad. We you guys drove an hour and it said fuck. Drove it. an hour and we're like, we can't. There's no way I'm driving to Philly. Oh, so you guys were done Saturday? We were done. We, yeah, we didn't have a show yesterday. We just got a hotel. What'd you guys do in the hotel? Watch the Eagles game. Just we off, had a nice sleepover. Just nursed hangovers. Yes. Where'd you make it to? What city? Uh, it's called Roanoke Rapids in North Carolina. We didn't even leave <laughs> North Carolina, dude. And dude, uh, that's so <laughs> funny. We, we we went to Cracker Barrel as that's a family. We had a nice dinner at Cracker Barrel. I got some country fried steak. Come on now. That's a, you guys. So you guys beat a hangover. And then just we all went back to the room and farted for eight hours. <laughs> oh <laughs> the my room God. Stunk, dude. <laughs> and then, and then we, so there was three of us. So we got twin beds and then put a cot in between the twin beds. And Peter slept in the middle. And he fucking snored all night. <laughs> like the hardest <laughs> snores possible. It was crazy. I had to put headphones in. I'm surprised they rented you guys a hotel room. They were they like, tried not to. It's the three of you guys? Yeah, they tried not to. What'd they say? And we had camera equipment. So they were like, what are you three? <laughs> what is going on? That little twink <laughs> is about to get leveled. We do look like a porn. Beezer, guys, Beezer looks like a porn director. Beezer, technically. A contact looks Beezer like a Beezer technically otter. is involved in the porn industry. True, he was. Uh, but the, the farts after the Cracker Barrel with the hangover, the farts oh. in there were crazy. Mm. I left. I, I actually went down to the lobby to get the boys some sweet treats because we were watching an awesome documentary on Netflix. What you guys watching on? Uh, we put it on. We put O'Connor's laptop on a chair and watched Netflix. God, the three damn. of us all just laying on our beds, dude. Oh, so my God. fucking funny. So Beezer was laying on a <laughs> Beezer was laying on a mattress, not the cot. He yeah. took the mattress off and just laid it in between the beds. And so I would just l- reach over the bed and like fuck with him and like tickle him and shit. He's like, "Stop! Just cut it out!" <laughs> but one time I scared him. He wasn't looking. He was like looking. You know, he's playing games on his cell phone. <laughs> I he's playing out. Candy Crush. And shit. I saw his belly sticking out. So I fucking grabbed his belly. Real hard. He goes, "Oh!" And he farted so fucking loud. I scared him. A fart out of him. Oh was, my uh, god! It's really the highlight of the trip. 
Dude, Beezer get zero. Beezer be like, enough. It's yeah, so yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then uh, I just kept telling O'Connor that he can never accept responsibility. <laughs> like something would happen, he'd be like, this person's an idiot. I'd be like, dude, you are an idiot. You're the problem. <laughs> It's a fun trip. That sounds like fun. It's the mutual Man. decision of like it was a first person being like, "You want to stop driving?" I'm like, "Yeah, I, I could definitely." All three of us were like, "Let's." Well, the plan originally was to get to drive like two or three hours and then watch the Eagles game somewhere. Okay, like go stop at like a bar or something. But then it just became we could just get a hotel room and watch it. Perfect. Yeah. All of us. In complete agreement. It was a total, like, 100%. No, no one disagrees. It's like, I have nothing to do today. Let's yeah. sleep. Let's sleep and relax. It was nice. Did you watch your birds? Watch the birds. Um, Big victory. Yeah, whatever. I mean, they're just playing. That's the first, you know. Yeah. My cousin my cousin Frankie was, like, working at my house. He came to build, like, a little breakfast bench. So he gave you some quotes? Yeah, basically. Some birds quotes? Well, he was just kind of like, dude, they're battling for who loses first in the playoffs. He's like, who yeah. gives a fuck? Maybe so. I mean, I have faith in my birds. I'm diehard. I have hard. faith in my birds. I almost kicked them out and said, "Dude, I you don't, I don't want you to even finish this breakfast bench." That's the attitude uh, you're bringing towards my birds around here. Why would he say anything like that about the birds? Because he was working. His friends were giving him shit, like, "Oh, what are you working again? Like, you don't ever watch football." Blah, blah, blah. Which I was like, "Your friends are right." True. You fucking bitch. My friends made fun of me for not watching Notre Dame anymore. Really? Every time they have a night game, I have a show. My friend was like, you're not even a fucking fan. He was like spazzing on me because I was making fun of me. Oh, the pest. Oh, right, yeah. right, right. Who, someone was just telling me they pested someone real hard lately. Really? Someone was just telling me, like, yo, I listened to that cast and I pested someone pesting as hard as I could. Pesting. I, I pested O'Connor. <clears throat> <laughs> uh, I pested O'Connor pretty good this whole trip and he didn't break once. Really? Normally he breaks and it's How's that the feel for funniest you? thing in the world. If you're pesting and you're not getting the reaction, that kind of uh, sucks. I, th- I, I eased up a little. I didn't pest as hard as you because there were some rough hangovers. True. You know? That's the best. That's like that's like when you eat a certain food for like mosquitoes, dude. That's like the perfect <laughs> pest true, environment. True, true. Yeah, and I just, the, the I've pested him enough that he's spazzed a couple times. So you've gotten the goods. I've got I've gotten him to freak. One what, time. What's it like? It, did I tell this? I don't think so. We were both in a hotel room. I mean, you did give him the nickname the turd national, yeah, semi nationally. True. true. People in North Carolina. <laughs> yo, we were walking. Shout out to these two different dudes. While we were walking from the hotel to the show, fan a fan walks by and just goes, turd. <laughs> and then right when we were walking to the door, this guy goes, turd. <laughs> like, somehow they knew to like whisper it at us. That's perfect, dude. Yeah, please do that if you see Chris. Just oh. whisper it. Don't even acknowledge him. Just go, turd. <laughs> It's so funny. Uh, no, this is a good story. This is an ultimate, ultimate pest. Yeah. So me and him were on the road, and we shared a room. So we have two beds. O'Connor uses Tinder from the hotel we're staying at. He's trying to get pussy. Meets up with a group of girls. We're, we both have... He's working. He's been working this whole time on this girl. Mm-hmm. And finally, they like start to do stuff. And I was like, what's going on over there? <laughs> he fucking spazzed, dude. He was saying? like, you're a piece of shit, dude. Like, just lost his shit. Everybody, the girls, everybody was very upset at him. What? He was like, his whole family's like this. All they do is fucking, they don't know how to look. Like, it's crazy. It's what crazy. did the girl, did he go back to like he did not, rubbing his hard bone He did not get anything. He, you, you he stopped, blew it. You stopped him from getting into, it. Yes. That's a pretty, that's a monumental pest, dude. It was ultimate pest, especially because I this? got a nut. <laughs> when was this? Woo. Uh, a while ago. Don't yeah, okay. no yeah, dates. Yeah, yeah, no yeah, dates. Yeah, Come yeah, on. Yeah, what are you doing here? I thought you were saying this is this weekend. I was like, we No, 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 no. This is over, way back when you guys over started. A year ago. Yeah, I hear you. When you guys started, over a year ago. Ten years. By ago. the way, I heard you. Um, but yeah, that's he normally spazzes. He didn't spaz once this trip. Dude, having him denounce your whole family, like having in, a sexually in screaming in front of these girls, sexually frustrated Okani. Oh. <laughs> Oh my god! And then, fuck it. He was like, "This is how his whole family is. They're all fucking assholes." And I was just like, "Whoa, dude!" <laughs> <laughs> all because I was like, "What's going on over there?" That's all. Hilarious. It took. Yeah. And he just spazzed. Easy to play off. Yeah. It's also kind of erotic too to be like nothing. Get, yeah, exactly. Like, don't worry about going it. Going on over here. Yeah, or just let out a simple groan, just like. Ugh. <laughs> <laughs> dude, pushing Beezer's stomach, scaring him, and him farting was he was like, oh, perk. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing! It carried me through the trip. That'll definitely get you home. Yeah. You guys probably drove home on that. Yeah, we laughed the whole way. You guys probably right away got in the car like we got. We did yes. it. We're ready to roll. The great weekend. That's what's up. Good weekend though. Seems like a fucking yeah, blast. It was a fun weekend. 
What did you guys do that night that was so wild? Like, what what did all that drinking Saturday? lead to? Yeah. Uh, we just stayed at the club and got drunk after with some up? of the staff. We were dancing. We put on some music. O'Connor was a dancing fool. Really? O'Connor was dancing, dude. Really? Yeah. Little, the pest, the turd. The turd <laughs> was down there fucking <laughs> cutting a rug. It's fun, man. Just a salt. He was just dancing just to yeah. show his moves? He was showing his moves big time. Fuck. Yeah, it was dude. very fun. God damn it. That must be funny yeah. to watch him do that. Yeah, it was great. But so you guys got drunk in the club. Uh, we saw Star danced. Wars. Star Wars sucked that day. Uh, f- yeah, I think Saturday. Saturday. Yeah. Okay. Star Wars. What about Burr? What isn't Burr like in it? Oh no, it? he's in the Mandalorian. He's in like a show on Disney. For real? About it's a Star Wars show, not wow. the movie. Yeah. He accepted Nazi money. He did accept Nazi money. Mm. Mm. Interesting. What have you been up to? <laughs> what have I been up to? Dude, I've been just like I've just been crushing it on the home front. Yeah. Gym five days a week, eating well. What? Yeah, dude. Every I mean I've been I've been eating out minimally. I have I have like stump well a couple things occurred to me the last couple of weeks, but like I got real into what did you ever listen to the book the uh, Raw Contact? No. Do you, are you familiar with channeled literature? No. Shit, bro, dude. It's the this book, sounds like I'm not gonna like it, but go ahead. You're gonna love it. Sounds like I hate it, dude. So you you know who Ra is, like the Egyptian sun yes. god. So there's a there's a whole genre of literature that strictly comes from people who are channeling extra dimensional extra dimensional entities. Yes. So the Ra contact was there's these three people. I think it was two at first. Either way, there's three people, and uh, it was like a husband, a wife, and their like dog. And they, they were just meditating in the desert for like seven years. Just, they are just doing their thing. And they started getting into like channeling and stuff. So the lady decided to try to start channeling. And she just like started just spewing this like, dude, they wrote like five fucking Wait, books. Was it his bay? His bay. They dude, channeled. How corny do you and your bay have? All right, so you guys dude. are out like in the desert and you're like, I think I'm going to get into channeling. Yeah, dude. Which is step one, you're a fucking loser. But then your bay steals the thunder and is like, oh yeah, I want to get into channeling too. Oh, I'm channeling so hard over you. Dude. So she started channeling? She channeled Ra, the sun god Ra. Or, or, or Obviously. Not even the sun god. This Osiris. Is like, well, I'm trying to think. So yeah, her she's a mind. You're just a mind body spirit complex with certain distortions towards. Right now, it sounds like you have a cognitive distortion leaning towards envy. Right now, yeah, of obviously. Channelers. <laughs> envy of channelers? No, I do not envy them. <laughs> I, I Dude, have no such envy. So they needed sexual, like they were like it'll help channel, like it like sexual kind of um, contact helps like keep like they call it the instrument the person who's channeling. So this dude would be eating his wife's pussy, and she'd just be like speaking out like cosmic information and that's where in my head i'm like that sounds fucking awesome really dude this lady's talking about like how the you're eating a girl's pussy and she's like the pyramids known as the in the extra dimensional year of 2000 dude they filled ew. like five books how gross her pussy must have been five books dude ew i mean dude that's desert sniz coming from a fourth dimensional Ugh. fourth dimensional entity like yourself <laughs> i would believe that dude i'm six dimensional yuck so i'm hearing that i'm six dimensional i'm a wanderer dude so it's like I'm digging it, but if you know, obviously from the fourth dimensional with, you know, certain cognitive distortions, drove eight hours, dude. I can't, I can't. <laughs> dude, the raw contact is fucking lit. So what happens? Did they? I don't know. I'm only, I'm only like five hours in. They, it's like a sixteen You're hour. Only book. five hours in of this <laughs> lady getting her pussy. Eaten. No, that they were just. They don't like go through that explicitly. It's just the the whole book is just a guy asking a question, and then it goes. This I am Ra, and that because they're just saying like because these this was all on like audio set. Where'd you find this, oh, dude? Because I, I this is gibberish. This is junk. Bro, that's channeled. A, that's a giant waste. Channeled of time. literature that's is an enormous waste of dude, time. Dude, well, even think of it this way. Obviously, if she's not talking to, well, I have a whole stance right now. I my all my reading has led me to extra dimensional entities. All the reading I've done that right. culminated... New books. No, dude. Time to get some new books. Dude. All your books are leading you to a lady getting but, her pussy eaten and channeling raw. Dude. You read the wrong books. No, not at all. <laughs> not at all. Because I'm, okay. I'm reading all these books and like I'm just, you know, like, oh, that's cool. I'll read this next. Oh, what's this? And I'll Google it. Oh, I'll read that next. Dude, all the books, for some, it's, it's real weird, for the most part, have... All have a common thing of like, uh, like, do you know what mysticism is? Like the actual definition of it? No. What's the definition? So they, and this is according to, you know, to one source, but they were saying that mysticism is technically the belief that human beings are 
the physical manifestation of like God's consciousness. So like, you know, that every whole thing, like we're all God, like exploring and looking around, blah, blah, blah. So all, so I've read Zanoni. That's about as a Rosicrucian tale. Do you know what they believed? A Rosicrucian tale? Yeah. What is that? Rosicrucians. They're like out, they're like a branch of like alchemists or whatever. Okay. Or it's like, it like grew out of alchemy and apparently like a lot of like the, (laughs) see, like I've never, this is like some sort of weird Dungeons and Dragons history (laughs) history that I never looked into. (laughs) Yeah. Obviously it's a secret history, dude. You can't just dig through the fucking (laughs) It's secret history. Yeah, it is. Dude, the, there it's it, the Rosicrucians apparently have like strong ties to Philadelphia. You know Hermit Lane? No, bro. There's a cave in the woods in Philadelphia, <laughs> dude. There's a cave out there, and it's literally there was a. It's, think... it's got to be filled with dudes on heroin. No, it's not. For, weirdly, I've been inside there. Weirdly, it's not. But it so around it's uh, not party time in the cave. It's not party time in there, All dude. Right. You're, I mean, there's people who I've known people who have gone in there and like eaten hallucinogens. It was like. Hermit Woods in Philadelphia, you can look this up. They were a group of German, uh, a bunch of Germans. I can't think of the fucking word because I'm a fucking Nazis. moron. They weren't Nazis. <laughs> they were German mystics who came from, they were uh, f- fucking immigrants. I'm such an idiot. German immigrants. <laughs> <laughs> How did you forget immigrants, dude? Dude, because I'm, I'm I thought six, this was a hate podcast. I'm a six dimension. <laughs> that should be our, that's number one well, on I'm our agenda. Well, I'm about to talk about them in a positive light. So I was just <gasps> kind of like, what, what? No, the, um, I love immigrants, dude. I love immigrants. I honestly kind of do. Immigrants are we've all, dude, we've covered this. We've we have love lads, love True. the partner. We love the fucking partners. Love the partners. Love the lads. That is a that is a funny. But also, the, too, our downfall was our love. How we loved them too much. True, we were defending them. We were like, that must have been so fucking hard. Oh my god, that then. clip. Yeah, that was don't talk motherfucking about that clip. I'm like, don't even mention the fucking. We clip. love the partners, dude. So. It is funny how people would assume I don't like him. And I, my fucking grandfather was an immigrant. My, God, you better not. My grandpa was a fucking Son of immigrant. A bitch. The, uh, What's going on in that case? I, I just, my head was like, I was like, he pulled his goddamn weight, though. <laughs> <laughs> uh, he didn't complain. Dude, I was just talking on the way over here. Dude, nobody secures the bag harder than African dudes. People complain no. about it. Immigrants just come here and secure the fucking bag. Yeah. You want to talk about that's we need to come up with a good name for that. That's not too hateful <laughs> because uh but African immigrants are fucking they're mean uh, they fucking they are just trying to secure the bag, dude. Dude, that's I'm telling you, it's a tw- I've I've worked with them before. Mean isn't the correct. It's, they're not I'm mean. Not they're, looking, I, they're super friendly, dude. Yeah. Like all of that when you hear that like African music that's like low percussion, it's like hey, like it lists, like they're talking to you and it's like nothing but like I got in the Uber and the guy, I'm like, yeah, how you, he's a guy's like, how you doing, man? I'm like, chilling, dude. He's like, if you have your health, there's nothing. And I'm like, yes, dude. He's yeah, exactly. Like, Thank you, bro. <laughs> and it's, dude, there's, we were talking, me and him were talking relationships, dude. It was the funniest. What fun. were you guys commiserating over? It was funny. He's like, well, you know how women are basically children, right? <laughs> yes, yes, yes. <laughs> exactly. And in my head, I'm like, I know what you're saying. But it, it, I couldn't be like, no, well, no, I don't know anything. Actually. And I don't know what you're talking this about. This isn't Cameroon, sir. <laughs> <laughs> Not that there's anything wrong with c- c- Cameroon. Cameroon's got its own culture, but here, you know. <laughs> no, it was so funny, though, because we're talking. Uh, he was talking to me, about. I was asking him earnestly, and I'll get back to the, don't let me forget about Herman yeah. Cave. I'm not going to let you. Thank you. But Bunch it, of Germans hanging out in a cave? Yeah, dude. Doing Mystics. magic? Mm, okay. Like something could happen back then. We don't know. We don't know, but, but I think we do know that they didn't do any magic. Okay, we'll see. What do you mean, we'll see? <laughs> I mean, you're a fourth dimensional entity, dude. All right, so what did you and this immigrant talk about? <laughs> <laughs> so I get in the car, you know, we're driving. So he hit you with the women have dog brains right away. He was like, come on, man, we both well, know. He wasn't, but that's the thing, too. It was like he was he was being really nice. Cause we're, so we're talking about the fact that uh, he was like saying how he's from a big family. Cause we're talking about having kids, and he's like, yeah, I only have one kid right now. I'd like to have more. And I'm like, yeah, I kind of want to have more kids too. I don't want to just have one. And uh, he was like, yeah, man, my my dad. My, he's like, I'm one of six kids. And then my dad had another wife, and she they had seven kids. That we have a big family. And I was like, bro, how did your dad pull that off? I'm like, I'm asking earnestly, like, how the fuck do you how do you deal with the having two wives? And he was just like, it's easy, man. He's like, you just gotta be straight up and be like, this is what we're doing. This right from the gate, like this is the kind of dude I am. This is what I want to do. He's like, I mean, I'm not gonna lie. In Africa, it's a little easier to do that. <laughs> he's like, over here, he's like, I suggest you just stay to yourself, stay to yourself. Or you know, he's like, what did he say? He's like, women have a lot of power here, man. 
And he's like, they just, he's like, they can run you into the ground. If you, he's like, it's harder in Africa. It's easier to kind of like. You put can your, check your bitch in exactly. Africa. Exactly. And he was like, over here. He's where, like, where in Africa was he from? He didn't say. He didn't say. He didn't say. But uh, he was just kind of, and he was like, he wasn't even talking like fucking bitches. He was like, hit me with like matter of fact stuff. He was like, yeah. he's like, no, you can be nice and still like. You know, limit your babe. He was like, because if you don't limit them, he's like, they literally, it's, dude, he was saying what I said. He's like, let's do what they say to do on every single decision, and they will literally just completely control your whole life and cut it all off, and you'll just be, you'll be fucked. You'll be living a, a bad life. If women are in control, you'll live a bad life? If you live, if you were to go like, yeah, if you were to do like the ex, like radical yes experiment where you're just like, okay, yeah, let's do that. Oh, yeah, let's do that too. Oh, yeah, yeah. If you do that, I still hold, I, and again, maybe my views warped. I don't know, but this guy is telling me the same exact thing, and I'm like, across the pond, he's telling, you, he's delivering the same message, same message, bro. And again, gotta, so the message is clear. Well, well, it's, this continent or the other, check your bitch. Yeah, basically. Okay. Like, and not even in a way like that's what you and this man are saying. Not like rattling. I the, think women should have complete control. Well, yeah. No. <laughs> no, obviously no. not. Dude. No, no. Check your bitch. I'm, th- I'm trying to think. The conversation we were having was a nice one. It wasn't like yeah, fucking bitches. Yeah, was, the sexism wasn't out of hate. It wasn't. It was just he was just, was just this, good, this, this guy. Dude, we're exactly we're driving, and he was just like he's like, man. I mean, sometimes I don't even want to go back there. <laughs> At home. <laughs> yeah. yeah. He's like, sometimes I just I want to stay out here, and I was telling him, I'm like, yeah, dude, like. When I got married, I remember thinking about my dad sitting in his truck for like 45 minutes after work mm. and being like, what's dad doing out there? And being like, uh, when you pull up and you're like, <sighs> and you sit outside your house, you're like, I'm not fucking going. Not yet. I'm not going in yet. Mm. We're, you know, we're just talking about stuff like that. That makes sense. Yeah, but it, it was funny. It was funny hearing him. And again, maybe this could be the fact that like, you know, he's, you know, if you're not really... It, it takes a lot to be equipped. You have to be raised a certain way to be equipped to like deal with women in like a 100% feminist approved way. So if you miss well, out yeah. on those like crucial early role models, it's just a lady yelling at you and you're like, shut up, shut the fuck up, <laughs> yeah, shut yeah, the yeah, fuck yeah. up. And then someone's like, you shouldn't do that. It's like, I don't know, whatever. I'm, I'm fucking, I'm going off on a tangent. I like it. What are those goddamn Germans doing in that cave? Oh, so the... Uh, so they're, they're hermit cavers, these people came over and they uh, they were like a religious sect who just lived off the land and used plants and stuff. Obviously, we're fucking tripping off Saudi. What, what uh, like when? In like Germany. The 1800s. Or they in came Philly? Here in, yeah, they came okay. in Philly in like the 1800s, I believe. Yeah. And just chilled in the woods and fucking lived off the land, did their thing. I think one of the prominent families in that area still comes from that whole, uh, and they're named after, not hermit. There's another street up there. I think they like named after that family. Hmm. So yeah, they like, kind of embedded in Philadelphia, and they became like you know part of the. That's where a lot of that Rosicrucian kind of like uh, Benjamin Franklin secret society shit comes from. Oh, I think he was earlier than that. He would have been, yeah. But yeah, but the, uh, but yeah, the Rosicrucian story I read was based. So they're again from this book. Their worldview is that. So you know Wait, how like was, was there any magic in the cave? Of course they're doing. They were eating plants and having like you know they were living off the land and doing all kinds of wild shit there. What was the magic? It's a secret society, dude. I don't know. I'd have to get inducted into it. But the Rosicru here's I I can tell you though because again I read the Rosicrucian tale. I read between the lines because when you read kind yeah. of text when you read text like that, Shane, you, read can't take the them, lines. you can't take them face value. True. They tell you that they're like this is allegory. Don't read if you try to read between the lines. That's just to filter out fourth dimensional entities. If you're sixth True. dimensional. You can start being like, oh, okay. Who put this fourth and sixth dimensional into your world? Uh, the fucking one, the one creator of the universe, Adonai. Anyway. Fucking- <laughs> <laughs> what happened when I was gone, dude? What the fuck? I was gone for like a week. <laughs> no, dude. <laughs> so the fucking- Are you macro dosing? No, dude. I'm just reading channeled material, dude. What's the problem? Right. Nothing. Dude, just, just get into it. It's, cha- it's, right. it's fucking good. So the uh, so in the Rosicrucian, this is the Zanoni book I've been reading for like three months. I used to bring it to school and people just look at it and be like, what the fuck is that? <laughs> <laughs> but the, um, so this is, I think this is the belief of like, you know, I guess would would be like, you know, certain mystics of, I guess like the 17th century was that it was like a Christian sect who didn't believe in like the Old Testament God per se. Well, they did, but it was like totally different to where, so like, say like. You know, like a leaf has like a drop of water and in that drop of water, there's just like tons of, there's a whole, you know, billions of cells and all that stuff. And then, you know, the belief is that it just scales out. So then like we're people, we're on a bigger, we're just part of a bigger system. And the idea that 
that kind of like magnification stops at outer space, like just stops dead at outer space, is they were back then they were like, that's so dumb to think. Because this was sure. like during the French Revolution kind of when people started pushing atheism real hard. And they were like, no, you guys are idiots. Religious zealots don't have the full picture. This is what's going on. And so they they're, they theorized that within outer space, there was just different life forms that we couldn't see that were still there. But if you were to like, they like, you know, did a lot, they ate a lot of plants. They would get themselves into a trance. And then the idea was you could channel these extra dimensional entities, but you, there was a lot of bad ones out there. This is the shit Alex Jones talks about, how people channel extra dimensional, like all this other kind of shit. So saying you could channel these things if you were in the right mind state, if you were like, if you were able to do it, but if you face them with less than perfect courage, they'll ruin you. So if you're, if you're there, you're in a trance, you're channeling these things and you're not totally like be gone because they'll fucking haunt you. So if you're not, if you don't, (laughs) if you don't meet them with perfect, that's the, the whole thing with the dweller on the threshold is you hit the threshold. And if you hit the threshold with anything left than perfect blind faith in Adonai, the fucking one creator, Dude, these things just chew you up and fuck you up. And the only way you can get away from it is by running around merriment and fucking around. Then those, you know, the things that the, the guardians of the threshold that come to haunt you after you enter a trance state, they'll keep bothering you. But if you just hit them, you're like, go back to your place. I don't, I'm, then, you know, a donate floats down. It's like, yo, what's up, bro? One and then what secrets- happens when you get in there? Oh, you just, you know, the secrets of the universe. You're able to move in a way that like most people can't. In this story, these guys were two immortals who did this. So, you know, again, it's allegory. But does anybody know the secrets of the universe? Who knows? I mean, Ra, basically. But it wasn't it wasn't even like that. I don't take it that seriously. But to me, there's something to be said for being able to hit a trance state and not bugging out and wimping out. And the insights you can get from a trance state, again, like channel material. Even obviously if it wasn't like the the Egyptian sun god talking to this lady, if someone can get into a state where they produce five volumes of books i'm impressed tons of literature and some of it a lot of it's it's like gibberish i don't know some of it's pretty cool some of it is jib some of it is like because technically we've produced five volumes of gibberish it's fucking good though and have i not been in a trance the entire time (laughs) (laughs) i've been in a trance for a few episodes and they've come back to haunt me (laughs) (laughs) you should claim that was channel material i was channeled big time i was channeling Exactly. That's what I tried to say. I was like, I was just channeling. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, dude, channel material rules. I was watching this guy. There's mm-hmm. like a health and fitness YouTuber I watch, Paul Check. And I have a dude, I used to watch this when I, I was a personal trainer back in the day. I remember. I used to watch Paul Check, and I was like, this dude fucking rules. He just like. What did he do? He's just, I don't know. The way he, uh, he takes like a holistic thing. He takes like a holistic approach to, um, like health and fitness. And I was always into that. I was like, dude, this guy, cause I was like reading these books with fucking people who were like, I remember watching, there's a dude, Elliot Hulse. He would kind of bother me a little bit. Cause he would just like look in the camera dead eyed and be like, I breathe deep every morning, like shit like that. And I was just kind of like, all right, but now he's kind of entered into kind of like almost like a more of a mystical realm. But like, dude, he checks in with all of his other YouTubers and Paul, he goes to this dude, Paul checks house. That's how I found out about the fucking raw contact because this dude fucking he greets him at the door. He's fucking barefoot, shirt off, and he's smoking a volcano bag. <laughs> he's like, "What's up, dude?" And he's like telling him all about health and fitness, all the stuff he's done. Then he points to the raw material, dude, and you could tell this other guy, Elliot Holst, who's a little more straightforward, is like, "Oh, cool, what's that?" And he's like, "Oh, dude, he fucking gave all the secrets of the universe." And he's like, "They were right about stuff that like scientists." got like they you know retroactively yeah. like holy shit and he's like well, what kind of stuff are they write about he's like oh dude like the structure of the universe and he's like well like what and he was like it's just you got to read the book dude because <laughs> <laughs> no, i was like please let's go <laughs> he's like you tell know, what are the secrets they faltered and he was like you got to read it anyway oh i mean they go into like tarot card all that stuff about how it works and what you're supposed to do with it tarot cards mm-hmm. you should get into tarot i'm about to you, when you take tarot, I, if you got into tarot cards, I'd be I'd be delighted. You don't know you know how to do it though. No, you go through them every single day, and then eventually you memorize the different cards, and you're able to pull them up in your mind at any time. And you're just like one of the cards in the tarot deck is the Black Race. By the way, really, you're supposed to every now and again channel the Black Race, like WWW WW Black Race do, and be like because they're like it, the guy was explaining like they're a very strong group. You channel them every now and again, like, what the fuck am I? Fuck, I got to tap into it. <laughs> you got to tap into your blackness, dude. I've According been, to tarot. I've been done tapping into that. According to tarot, exactly, dude. I did it today. I, I was consulted my fucking, 
my lift guy, I'm like, bro, I'm I'm fucking in my wits out. Yeah, bitches ain't shit either. He, well, no, he was just like, nah, dude. His message was, I thought it was pure, dude. It was like, just be yourself. Don't you, you again, dude? That's the dweller on the <laughs> threshold. You cannot you cannot confront the fucking feminine psyche with anything less than perfect fucking courage and faith. Because if you if you falter at all, they'll they will fucking pop in there and be like, mm-hmm. what will they do to you? They'll manipulate you. My theory is, and again. I, I, I'm sorry if this hurts. They're like sheep, and you got to be a sheepdog. Not even, dude. I don't think they're sheep. All right. I think it's more like they're just, for the most part, and, and dudes are too, but it's like, I don't know, man. It's like, I, I was telling someone the other day, like, in terms of, like, we're, they are talking about, like, insecurity. Someone was saying something about, like, oh, it's so annoying, like, with, like, waiting for them to get ready. They're, it was, like, some, like, stock kind of thing. And, um, fuck, what were they complaining about exactly? It was, like, makeup. And it's like, yeah, dude, I hear what you're saying, but you have to understand it's like, like looks to them. It's like, you know, they don't have like the penis hang up, but like their looks, if a chick's hot, that's a dude, that would be like to equate the feeling they get, in my opinion, would be like if a dude was like a waiter came up and just flopped like a soft eight on the table and was like, what's up guys? And you'd have to be like, fuck, Oh fuck. yeah. So I'm like, you have to understand, like they're dealing with competition on a scale that like you can't fucking imagine. So then like there's this constant like push to kind of you know be part of the winning group that if you you know you, they you can fall into the chess game of that unless you're totally like no blah, blah, blah. you know does that make sense yeah you can be reworked if you're if you approach them as just kind of like oh, i'm just here for the ride you'll wake up a different dude in six months if you're not constantly like whoa chill whoa chill of course there's exceptions to that but that can happen yeah you must check your bitch you must, dude, you must fucking per- total faith, dude. You must come to yeah. the Guardian and be like, be gone. Yeah, no. Be gone, evil sniz. I think. Reveal yourself as the nice woman I know you are. Be a sweet baby. <laughs> yeah. You're being a bitch. <laughs> and stop telling me what to do, bitch. <laughs> Thank you, Ra. <laughs> God damn, dude. <laughs> you, are on, you are in outer space, dude. <laughs> no, it's funny. I haven't been smoking much weed either. Really? Not a lot, dude. I, I'm telling you, I save it for when I can have three hours blocked off and I hit the couch. And you black out. Total trance state, <laughs> dude. Shit face. Now I'm kind of scared, dude. I'm scared Ra's going to call me, dude, if I what go. What if he calls you? I'm, I'll have to listen, dude. If I get channeled, that's the other thing, too. Like, it takes a toll on you physically if you get channeled. channeled. That is the proof they had. The lady got like, end up getting, like, wicked arthritis, apparently. Because it takes a toll. Dude. You can't just channel Kirby's lines. been getting channeled. <laughs> you think he's channeled? Yeah, that's why he's got the arthritis. <laughs> That'd be funny if the, channeled. if the whole time he was just being channeled, the whole like if his voice actually was like, "Hey guys, what's going on?" He's like, "Well, uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah." The threshold thing is, yeah, you know, taller than the threshold is my shit. That's something I yeah, did. but it doesn't. I, I hear what you're saying, but the allegorical thing part, like nature of it, it doesn't necessarily need to be a trance. It could just be life. True. You know, you need to face on your fucking problems just with the utmost confidence. The author would agree, dude. Yeah. There, there's no strict, again, this stuff is I don't think it needs to be post-volcano bag. True. You know. 100%. But again, if you don't, if if that's not an ingrained. Now that's just me. I'm like five dimensions. You might be seventh like dimensional, five. bro. You yeah, might, true. You might be seventh true, dimensional. I might be seven. I might be past all the, you It know, goes up that. to eight and repeats on another scale. Just like, a, music, one. Just like a musical scale. I'm at one You're dimension. not a one dimension. I'm, I'm past eight. I'm repeated. Oh, oh you're in a I different. A, I mean, I've already passed it. Well, one dimensional is just the um, is like, mo- well, yeah, one dimensional is just like a, a literal like a rock, and then yep. like a plant is a two dimensional where you, if you're just striving towards light, that's a plant. Three dimensional, someone who can self reflect, and we're right now as a planet, we're like in the fourth dimension. We're you know we're having some tough times getting all the way there, but yeah, hopefully we can move up. There's what would be the fourth dimension? Uh, it would be. So being self-aware and then having a bent towards service, using your self-aware nature and then forcing that all towards the realm of service so that, you know, we can live so in like nurses. Place. Yeah, but so not like a nasty slutty nurse. Slutty little also, nurses. Also, yeah, basically, be slutty little nurses, which not a bad fucking idea. Not a bad vibe. Thanks, Rob. Not a Rob. bad idea. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Damn. Uh, yeah, it was, a, it was a different week for us, you and I. Oh, yeah, dude. Oh, fucking yeah. I mean, right now I'm on, again, I'm on a productivity kick that's like, on, dude, It's it doesn't stop. I wake up in the morning and I have a little whiteboard. So I have my four core tasks of the day, the things I have to do every single day to like, you know, this is the stuff I like to do every single day. And like, 
I make sure I do that. And then I do all the other, other stuff. So it's like, I wake up, write down my four tasks. I'm like, all right, I have to do these things. And here's the obligations I have to get done that exist outside of that. So it helps me insulate my day to not get caught up in doing like spending too much time on stuff that to me doesn't really matter. Yeah. So I've been fucking, it's been fun. That's nice. I dude, I use every minute like of my day. It's weird. It's fu- It's kind of fun now. What what are this, what do you do? Like what for example? Uh, my four core tasks are: I, I have to work out, I have to meditate, I have to write, I have to read. Outside of that, I don't give a fuck what I do. So it's like, you know, then there, it, other than that, it's like my responsibility. All my other stuff I have to do, and then I try to balance it all with like stuff I yeah. I like to do as well. So I've been yeah I've been crushing it, dude. It's been I've been getting a lot of stuff done, and I've been I have this my so when I have a hey, this is definitely the, the newest thing I've been doing. That's been I've been getting super pumped on. Is visualizing my energy, visualizing my energy center, dude. You get a boost. So I feel tired. I just I close my eyes, dude. And I think I picture this like it's a gold ball and it's in the ground. And it's dusty, and I'm like, fuck, dude. And I sit there and I just imagine it up in the air and spinning real fast and like giving off light. And I, dude, I get charged up. Then when I'm flying, I check in on it. I'm like, oh yeah, the ball is fucking spinning, dude. I'm telling you, it fucking wakes me up. Damn, it's pretty tight. I think I lost you. You lost me. <laughs> You know what I'm talking about? I think you're gone. Dude, visualizing no, you my... Visualize your, you visualize your internal energy center, and you just go like, what am I feeling right now? And you're like, mm, man, that fucking thing's in the dirt right now. You think about it, like, why? And you're like, I gotta get hype. And you just imagine it floating off the ground and, and spinning get, real fast. You get crunk. I get fucking hype, dude. You get it crunk. literally sends adrenaline. I'm like, boom, let's fucking roll. Hell yeah. It's pretty tight. All right. And then at nighttime, and I also make sure I get... You eight, gotta tuck it in at night. The... Oh, dude, the mother of all my core activities is eight hours of sleep. So my day starts the night before, bro. I make sure I get a solid eight. So that's the start. That's the true start of the day is the night before. Don't get it twisted, bro. True. That's the start of the day. I was in a, I was in a fart den listening to Beezer snore. <laughs> I got no sleep. We watched uh, we watched the entire that. There's a documentary on Netflix called "Don't Fuck with Cats." It's really good. What is it? Uh this guy made like fucked up videos of he made this video of putting two kittens in a like a vacuum sealed bag what? and vacuum sealing it so killing these cats in this bag and he put it online and then these people made a Facebook group devoted devoted to finding out who he was and they were like obsessed with it kind of like uh and they like did like shit like looking at what's in the background where you could buy that like to try to locate him geographically oh, like okay. stuff like that kind of like what they do with Shia with yeah the, LaBeouf. Were these kittens or cats? Kittens. That's fucked up. Really fucked up. Then he made one where he had one tied on a stick and wrapped in saran wrap, so just its head was out, and he just dipped it in a bathtub and drowned it. Pretty fucked up. Then he had one where he just fed it to a python. <laughs> Brutal. Hilarious. Yeah, no, it, it's not funny. It's <laughs> no, it's fucking horrible. Up. So he was playing with the cat first. The python. Ah, man, so the a cat kitten, was like, too. It's the like... kitten was like playing with a Santa Claus hat. Ah, oh, that's... So... Did they find this guy? I mean, look, go watch it. Just, but if you had, you know, fast forward a little bit if if uh, you want to watch it because it's really good. Um, what do you mean fast forward? Through this podcast because of the spoilers, you know. Oh, I got what you're really saying. Well, hopefully they find this guy and bust his ass, dude. They did. Good. They found it because after he made those cat videos, he tossed on a video with a boy. He Whoa, murdered a guy. On. He murdered a guy with like an ice pick on camera. That's not surprising. Yeah, I mean that's what they were saying. The people in the group were like, "He's gonna kill a person soon." Yeah, that's and true. And then he he knew there was a Facebook group, so he started fucking with them. Fuck. And he posted in their Facebook group like, "The next one's not gonna have cats. It's gonna have guys, or a guy." I mean, a dude went like what he happened? Like what went else? Fucking else? He cut every like his arms and legs off. Like fucked his face after he cut his head what? off. What? Like this guy did wild shit. Yeah. What the fuck? Yeah. That's fucked, And like, dude. mailed, like, the hands and feet to, like, Parliament in Canada. Oh, oh yeah, gave away the location, yeah. Yeah. It was nuts. That Facebook group must have been lit. Like, we got to stop this guy. Oh, well, the, the people <laughs> in the Facebook kill someone, group eh? was, like, in <laughs> Vegas, and there's some lady in Vegas, which she's pretty brutal. She's, like, <laughs> you can tell she's, like, a nice, sweet lady, but sure. she has, like, internet speak. Yeah. So she's like, but there's this weird like dork thing where now they're like, yo, that's fucking dope. Yeah. And it's like, that. what are you doing? Why are you talking like What's that? What's dope either? What was even dope? Oh, for? the the cops that came in and arrested him eventually were like these. He went to Berlin. He was in Germany when they caught him. That's dope. 
and she was Catching like, the, the 10 most badass police officers walked in. It was fucking dope. She's just some white dork from Vegas. I don't think you're, yeah, I don't think you're allowed to refer to the police as dope. She fucked up. Those cops were so dope. Kick ass cops. <laughs> like, it's all. Those kick ass cops found that guy and beat the shit out of him. They're so fucking dope. Yeah, it's like they just started using curse words as adults. Oh, it's pretty funny man, to hear. I hate that. It's funny yeah, to I listen to. About. I, yeah. Dude, yeah, I, I, I know someone who's like that. But I don't give a fuck. You're like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Did you ever say that before? Yeah. Yeah, it's kind of weird. When it doesn't roll off, yeah. Yeah, it's like, I'd have told them, I don't give a shit. And you're like, yeah. okay. Why are you talking about a time that you cursed? <laughs> Sweet. <laughs> yeah, and they end this documentary by make, like trying to flip it on you somehow. They're like, maybe we pushed him too hard by giving him like the attention he was getting when he killed the cat. And then she was like, maybe we all did. Maybe it's time to shut off this machine. And like, kind of put it on the viewer for like, maybe you did for watching this. It's like, what? what? Why'd you guys I'm do that? Kill you? I'll fucking come down there and cut your head off, lady. <laughs> I'm still laughing about a lady in Canada getting killed by like a psycho. I'm like, oh no, oh no, <laughs> no. Oh, actually, no. actually, it was a Asian. Ow. It was an Asian gay man. He killed an Asian gay man. He did kill a partner, dude. Asian sweet boy. He killed a sweet boy that he got off Craigslist. Now I'm fucking pissed. Yeah, it was just now a sweet, it was just there. a sweet boy trying to dish out some head, get some head. Oh, so he was having head. like gay sex. He was gonna have gay sex with a sweet boy, and he ended up, you know, cutting his fucking head off. Got a little rowdy. What the fuck, dude? dude the guy is the biggest cornball ever. His, his name's the... Rocco Magnata. That's his name. He like tries to be. He was trying to be a male model. He's the biggest douche of all time. A little bit of he sounds a little Andrew Cunanan in to me. Who's that? The guy who killed uh, Versace was it? Oh yeah, maybe Andrew Cunanan was a a gay dude who was like a motherfucker. Did you ever see the Andrew Cunanan thing? No, bro, that's good. Oh, you've been telling about me. You've been telling me to watch this thing for like three years. It's and good, I had, dude. It's and I apologize. Fucking good. Yeah, he would like find a rich sugar daddy and then like start fucking him for money. And that you know, be like, oh, I'm your boyfriend. He was a yeah. sweet fucking. He was a sweet little boy. He was dude. a sweet boy to get. Yeah, he was like a half white, half Filipino sweet boy. Yeah, his dad lived. In, his dad bounced and like moved. His dad was a criminal, who was like a white collar criminal, and then abandoned their like the the feds came after his dad, who was like swindling old people out of assets. <laughs> yeah. So his dad in leaving the fucking authorities abandoned his family and was like, I'll come back for you, bro. Sick. I'll come back for you. So dude just sat there with his mom, and I think the kid got molested too by his Filipino dad. But either way, the uh, he just he went off the rails. He became obsessed with Versace, and he kept trying to meet him and talk to him. He met him once. Versace's like, "Yeah, bro, I'm not trying to bone you. Like, I know you're a hot, yeah. sweet boy, but like, come on." Or maybe they like kissed. Something happened. Then he's mm. like, "All right, bro, peace." Kind of sh- gave him the cold shoulder. So this guy started walk like working as a, a male prostitute and convincing his mom he was like, a, and everyone else he was like a serious businessman, and uh, he would like be fucking these dudes who were like closet like professional men who were like closet and gay professional men yeah prof- just professional men just dude. professionals who just like to Absolutely. wind down relax with young boys who smoked a little bit of meth <laughs> yeah <laughs> dude he would tape them tape their face up and then they so they couldn't breathe and pull it off put it on pull it off yeah and then kill them and then leave them in their home surrounded by gay porn and leave being like, yeah, dude, you are fucking gay. Don't forget it. And just leave and go find somebody else. He killed, like, tons of people. How many? I would say, like, seven or eight. Damn. Then he ended up, he's, his, the apex of his kill was he just one day, Versace was outside checking Getting mail, mail and he and shot him, right? He walked up and was like, pop, and shot him, killed him, and walked away. And then went and got his boyfriend at the time to, like, come with him. And then he killed, killed him, too, I guess. And wow. He eventually got uh, attacked by the feds, and they got him. I think he's in jail. I don't think they killed him, either. Really? He was a sweet dude. Boy. I hope he listens. He rules, dude. I mean, he's fucked up for <laughs> he what he rules. did. It's but like you, up. you watch this thing, and it's like yeah. I didn't think I could watch. I think it was on FX, and I was like, Yeah, it was I on. can't. I can't be disturbed by some. I was literally disturbed. I was like turning it off, being like, I don't want to fucking watch this. This is fucked up. Uh, there was a part in the Rocco Magnata thing where because they have the surveillance footage from. I mean, they had the murders online. You can watch it. Yeah, but there's surveillance footage of him. Walking in with the guy he murdered, but then the footage of him walking back out, he's wearing the shirt that the dude was wearing, which is pretty creepy to watch. And then he goes to the store to buy like cleaning supplies. And then while he's walking back in, he like stops in front of a mirror and like adjusts his hair. It's really fucking creepy to watch. Fuck. Yeah, having just done like cut a guy's arms and legs apart off and like <laughs> rest of the torso against a bathtub and was playing with the head 
in the bathtub on camera. Oh, like fucking wild. This guy dude. had his bathroom cammed out. He, yeah, he was just holding the camera. Oh, he was cameraing it himself. Yeah, 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 yeah. Filming it allegedly. Oh I, yeah, true. Could have been someone the else. The mom believes there was someone else. And in her defense, oh, in the snake video, there is another set of hands, which they never really addressed in the documentary. Really? She just brought it up and was like, there's another guy. Fair point. And I don't think at the end of the thing it, it ever there was ever any closure on that. I kind of fell asleep. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny watching it. They just so f- <sighs> it was really good, but then, I mean, we watched the whole thing in one night. So Beezer and O'Connor. Is it like right? making a murderer kind of yeah, thing? Yeah, it was like five episodes. They got to stop that. What? Making things like nine fucking hours. Yeah, there was a lot they, they could have done without. For exactly, sure. Exactly, dude. For sure. It's like just fucking, come on, yeah. boil it down, guys. Because it's just like a, like a, we'll do a five episode deal with Netflix. It's like, this could be two fucking hours. Yeah. Guys. Cut the shit. Cut it out. <laughs> you ever hear of a thing called fucking editing? You tell me. Chop it up, dude. Dude. So you got you got raw you got raw bumping around in that old noggin. Raw contact is pretty tight. When they talk, when they started, I was kind of listening you got to it. Raw like, on I was, the dude, brain. I'm listening to it. I'm like, all right, this is kind of bullshit. And then they're like, then there's six dimensional entities who typically suffer from because they're incompatible with like this particular Earth time space distortion. Dude, the fucking language from it's so fucking. The what are they? The mind body spirit complex known as John McManera. <laughs> it's so funny oh. the way the guy talked dude that, yeah, yeah, that's yeah. the thing there's like a whole lexicon they came out with that i'm like that'd be weird just to be like spitball on that yeah being able to stay in tune it was apparently they have tapes of it so it's like i don't know but then the guy was also saying like oh this was a physicist i looked these people up as like ufo researcher <laughs> da, da, da. um yeah i think you're getting into that realm man eh. It really seems like it's complete bullshit. Well, I know that, and I, but I like I approach these more as psychic phenomena. You know what I mean? So I'm not being like, oh my god. There's, of course, there's, I don't think you. I'm think like, Ra damn, dude. Was there channeled material? I didn't know that was a thing. So yeah. there's there's the aquar. There's another uh, channeled material. Yeah, I there, mean, technically, that's the Bible. T- exactly, that's what I was saying. Yeah. The Bible's technically channeled material. Yeah, which is that's funny to think about. That's that's what yeah, it's, it's supposed to be. It's the Holy Spirit guiding your hand, bro. It's a logos, bro. It's a logos, bro. Goes. <laughs> the Holy Spirit guides this podcast. Fucking rules, dude. Yeah, dude. Of course we're tapped into the logos, dude. The um. So what? Wait, you were you asking me? Oh, so when I was reading it, or li- whatever, listen to it. That's a good Audible book too, by the way. That's a good one. I was listening to it on the plane too. But the uh, so they're talking about. I was kind of like, yeah, I'm not really sold on this, and like, well, six dimensional. There's like they're asking like how many six dimensional wanderers are there, blah blah blah, and they're, like, they're I forget the number they said it's pretty low, which you know is unfortunate. But do you think like, you would be one of them? Obviously, dude, because they're like right. how like how do you tell? And they're like typically they have problems fitting into this particular Earth time vibration, and there's feelings of alienation. I was like check. What are you talking about? Everyone loves you, but dude, deep down inside, dude, I felt alienated Wait, my what? whole I felt alienated my whole life, dude. It's because I'm a wanderer. Allergies. I was like check. That's all. But I was like, surfer's eye, gluten surfer's allergy. Eye. Exactly. I'm, there's things in my, my body. Tons of friends, but you feel lonely. That's what I wonder. It's six dimensional. Do you try vibrating on the six dimensional frequency? I don't feel necessarily, well. Do you feel lonely? Uh, not so bad anymore. For a while, for my whole life, I was pretty lonely, yeah. Really? Yeah, I was lonely. Why were you lonely? Lonely, dude. I just wasn't connecting, dude. Was you problem. didn't have pals? I had pals. But I, I never felt that, like, close connection. Yeah. I had buds, and then I had girls who I kind of hated that I did for like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, you know, uh, you know. You had buds. I had buds. Now I now I make it now I hug all my friends. That was yeah. dude, people when I started doing stand up people would hug me like dudes I'd kind of like be like get off. Really? But now I'm kind of I love it. Now I have yeah. like, I hugged my friend the other day and he was like what the get, what the fuck is this? Yeah. So, I've that's been, always a bummer when you go when you hug someone and they're they're not ready for it. I didn't know. I mean, <laughs> dude, I when I I hugged my friend uh when I went to California and visited my friend Wes He's like he's like taller than me. So after the airplane, I hugged him, and I didn't realize I rested my chin on his shoulder. <laughs> God, <laughs> I was like that felt a fucking gay. Like it fe- I felt like a girl. Like I literally hugged yeah, yeah, him. Yeah. And it was just like the way I sat, my chin just went boom right on his shoulder, and I was like, oh Jesus Christ! That was. I was like, I gotta still relearn how to. Yeah, I'm, yeah, I'm getting. Yeah. I'm not a big hug. I haven't traditionally been a big hugger. Yeah. Then when I hug girls, I'm like, oh, weird about girls, that. you got a side hug now. Oh, dude. Yeah. Well, not now, but just kind of ever. A front hug is intense on a lady. Yeah. Pressing tits on tits. I remember Michael Neal had a fucking 
hot, hot ass, yeah, hot I know ass about this. girl from back in the day, dude. I know about this. Woo! I remember just being like, time to go, and I'd be fucking like, yo, you seen the fucking end? All right, let's Big go. Big time for- hug. Dude, coming in for the ultimate. Oh, man. I did, I, know did I tell you what my new boner is, too? Sorry, go ahead. I didn't want to cut you off. Uh, no, go ahead. This is this is a quick one. I saw this a lot in California, especially in Orange County, and I've been seeing it here a lot, typically in like rich areas. Older women who dress like kind of like teenagers. Yeah. Whew, it's bro. very hot. It's been fucking me up lately. Yoga pants and Uggs type thing? Yeah, like a, like a, a puffy coat with like a fur-lined hood. Yeah, like exactly. Some yes. yoga pants, some sparkly. Ran into one at uh, Starbucks on the way back here. Bro, that's my... That's right outside the, of D.C. That's the fucking boner and, right uh, now. And I, I scared Chris in line. <laughs> and, she, <laughs> and she was right behind him. I was behind her, and I scared Chris. What'd she and say? And she started laughing with us, and I was like, man, you are... I love you. Dude, I, I'm telling you, that's been like bratty yeah. old rich ladies who dress like their daughters. Been fucking me up, dude. I was I was standing in line just staring at her hand to see if she had a wedding ring on. I, it was that. It was real, dude. Me and her had a connection. That's what you need, dude. I need an old bay. Telling you, that's the new that's the new sauce, dude. Getting geezers? Like geezers who dress like dysfunctional teens. Geezers who dress like they might get pulled onto the Maury show at any minute. Mm. Like, yeah, I smoke weed. <laughs> yeah, bitch. Uh, Sorry, that was that was no, awful. no, no. Mine's again. Most of the stories this weekend tend to be about farts or scaring. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> that was kind of the entire weekend. It's funny. Uh, scaring at, each other. During Star Wars, I went up. I I went to take a piss, and while I, I was washing my hands and I was walking past the urinals, and this dude, younger dude, mm-hmm. standing there, farted. At the urinal, like right when I was behind him, loud enough that it, I, I like jumped. Yeah, he and scared I, you. He scared me with the fart, and then when I, you know, came to my wits, I just started dying laughing. Oh fuck! And he didn't laugh. I just, dude, I'm, I couldn't bizarre. believe it. That's, we that, talked about it last week about me and Bison laughing at a urinal fart after a movie. It happened again. Then Whoa. at this movie, this guy farted. I got, I jumped, and then I started laughing, and he was not happy. I couldn't, and he was young, dude. If I, if I farted. And, a, and somebody thing, behind me started laughing. I'd be so happy. I would melt, dude. I would yeah. be laughing so fucking hard. If someone turned around and was like, "Bah," <laughs> I would be. I would be like, "We have to hang out, dude." Dude. Oh, I dumped out. <laughs> dumped out at a gas station today. And, dude, uh, what? I'm this not, road life, bro. Wrong. I was on the road exactly. for eight hours. No, that's a uh, dude. That's an in all. That's some fucking like, Waffle House kicking around in my gut. Brave dumps, dude. I you dump in places I'm like literally afraid to take a dump. This in. was a rough one, especially it was a one. There was tons of traffic. Uh, Cold and was, cement walls and shit. And it was a single bathroom at like a truck stop. Exactly, yeah. I know. So when, when I got in, there was no one in line. Of course. Took a dump. When I opened the door, O'Connor was in the front, but there was like three or four truck drivers behind him. <laughs> and they, and O'Connor said they were furious the whole, <laughs> the whole time I was in there shitting. They were like... <sighs> <laughs> like, all of them had to piss. They were all like, <laughs> "Yeah, drunk drivers have to shit and piss as bad as a human being can possibly have to shit and piss." Yeah, so I was the, in there just because no one, no one, didn't offer no his... one tried to open the door. It was that's, locked. That's kind of polite. Yeah, but that's how I would know someone was in line. O'Connor was your fucking. O'Connor said guard. he knew I was in there, so he didn't try to open the door. Of course. So I didn't think anyone was out there. And I was just... So you were taking your time. I was just checking my... Yeah. Oh, fuck, just dude. checking Reddit. How long do you think you were done before? Uh, Ten? That's a long... That's it's a long gas station gas dump. station bathroom. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> dude. Yeah, it was long enough that there dumper. were... It was long enough that there were three or four dudes that were upset. I'm surprised O'Connor didn't let the truckers go in front of him. I would have been like, thank you for your service, guys. True. I'm like, this nation would shut down without you guys in roughly three days. True. Oh, I was looking at uh, Reddit. I was looking at uh, the fighter and the kids' Reddit. Dude. Fucking hilarious. Tough stuff. But bro. while I was looking at it, <laughs> I, they had a post about us. For real? For shit. Yeah, dude. Shout out the homeless cats. And uh, yeah. hell yeah, dude. <laughs> they're fucking hilarious. It is very funny. The dynamics was, like, insane. Looking down through the comments, and one of them just said, Hi, Shane. And I was just like, Oh, fuck. That's hilarious. It made me laugh. Being like, I know you're going to read He's this. He's going to read this. Yeah. Fuck, it was dude. really funny. That's actually hilarious. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Damn, that's what's up, dude. Yeah, dude. Hell yeah. That could be our fucking, that could be our fan base, dude. Let's poach him. You want to poach him? <laughs> I mean, I would, if, yeah, uh, yeah. We Hell should. yeah. I mean, dude, that whole subreddit is dedicated to just hating on that podcast. Uh, and I know. I looked like, into it more. You think they're razzing him? There's definitely some real hate. Yeah. But there's also definitely like, this is funny. This razzing the guy. Yeah. 
Oh no, yeah, I don't think it's necessarily all bitter true, hatred. True. Yeah, yeah. But it's pretty much dedicated towards <laughs> yeah, being yeah, like yeah. fucking. They don't post like funny clips. They post just like him <laughs> fucking up. <laughs> I know. I know. Yeah. Which that's... is that's what I was talking about last week. How it's funny now that there's that's a whole thing in and of itself. Like we're gonna meet every day. And just completely fucking try to tear this dude down. <laughs> and, you know, of course, they're razzing him. But yeah. it's still like, dude, I'm looking at that being like, I would like to think I'd be able to take that day in and day out. But I would bend to the mob. I'd be like, fucking, I'll, I'll do whatever you Stop making fun of me. Yes. I, I would bend to that 14, mob, 14,000 people. <laughs> there's four. There was, they're, they're homeless cats, dude. It's an entire city dedicated. They're called homeless cats, I know. Cause, yeah, because they made fun of. Yeah, I, and they're b b b beast, dude. I, <laughs> I'm all in on <laughs> I watched that whole incel documentary about fucking. Uh, the, oh, the guy that made that a documentary about. Yeah, so I know I know exactly job. what's going on in that subreddit. So I watched that documentary and then I went to the subreddit. And I'm like, whoa, dude, there's like a whole space <laughs> where you can just act <laughs> this a shit. Whole subculture of these people. You just there's like a small fucking yeah. city worth fourteen thousand. Yeah, a small city's worth of people, like a rural town's worth of people, who are dedicated towards like watching your every move and be like, idiot, <laughs> like, idiot, fucking pussy, moron, pussy, bitch. <laughs> But I'm yeah. t- the, the sin they're punishing for him for is taking that like kind of elitist attitude towards his fan base. He was kind of like, yeah, "You guys are fucking losers. I'm fucking killing it." They're like, "Dude, we'll just we'll hive mind make fun of you." <laughs> it's like, dude, I would instantly cave. Yeah, I'm like, so I'll quit. You guys just fuck. I'm done. Yeah, I mean, tough. I would keep I would keep ripping, but well, fuck, man. I've said it before, and I've, every comic has said it. It's like, nah, I, I try not to check, dude. I'm fucking. Dude, I read all the time. Checking nonstop. I, and it's funny because I'll hear other like New York comics that like Soder will be like, yeah, I do, you got to get off that shit. And, I'll, and then the day <laughs> I'll notice it, like a day a negative comment comes out about him. Hold no. Oh, that's I'll so be like, funny. You check every day. <laughs> like, I check Reddit. I don't check Reddit the same amount that I don't jerk off. I can maybe go three days and be like, yeah, I'm pretty much over oh, that. Dude. And then I'll get the urge. I'm like, oh, I'll just see what's I going on. I caught a beat in the hotel room. That was so fucking funny. Uh so yeah, we were together Thursday, Friday, course, Saturday, yeah. Sunday. That's four days, no beats. Yeah, someone's beaten. That's what's up. Yeah, sick. That's and a uh, shout out. But uh, <laughs> sick. <laughs> sick. Uh, I you know, and then when you're hungover, you get you got to get a nut God, off. God, you got to scream or dude. So I was I had a hungover nut yesterday, just lurking in my belly. You have a headache. No, okay. I wasn't that. Yeah, I was very hungover. It wasn't really a headache as Good. much as just I get fucking wah wah, just like the, thick fucking water brain. You get like the Jeff Bezos head in South Park. I just, just man, my like, face just is my face is already swollen. But when I'm really hungover, look just, good, I look ridiculous. No, I, I look I pretty look, shitty. Right I look like I, yeah, <laughs> I look like, like shit. Wanna, when I'm hungover, I look like I want to fucking die. Yeah, but I had a I had a howler in me, just a nut. <laughs> Well, Connor probably cage, had dude. a hard nut in him. Okani probably had a nut in there. I'm, I'm sure he got some off. He'll, he'll just he'll just get them off. But True. I went so th- to give you some context, and that's perfect. Bees are open to the show in Raleigh, and we were listening to the. He was listening to the audio of it because mm-hmm. we recorded the sets, and his intro. He's like, "Hey everyone, how's that? <clears throat> how's everyone doing? It's good to be here in Raleigh. I don't." <laughs> he cleared his throat twice it's into a microphone. Hilarious. So we were just making, we were joking about that the whole time. And then when I finally snuck off to the bathroom, caught a nut before I showered. What's up? When I came, I was like, and then I started laughing. Like I made myself laugh as soon as I came. I like, just thought of bees. Were they there? Yeah, they were in the room. Did they hear you come? They didn't hear my. So did you come out like oh god, like laughing? Like I came so out and tried to hide the fact that I jerked off in there for like. I probably lasted 10 minutes, and I was like, listen, I wasn't going to tell you guys this, but I just jerked off in there, and they were like, yeah, of course. <laughs> I was like, but right when I nodded, I made the beezer noise. <laughs> I started laughing. I was like trying to secretly jerk off, and I came, and I was like. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, back to the fucking Reddit, dude. Yeah, dude. That's The fact that you fucking let out a beezer grunt when you came. Beezer grunt when I nodded was hilarious. That's a mandate, dude. Yeah. That's a strict mandate. No, that was That's how come. hard it is. <clears throat> yeah. Do you, ever, do you ever fart when you come? Yes, <clears throat> that's pretty tight. Is, I'm, I think that comes with age. Yeah, I never had that when I was younger, but now every once in a while I'll uh, have to fart when I come, <laughs> and it's so fucking funny, dude. dude. So I'll, I'll, sometimes I'll do it, and it, dude, how funny is that? It's the most unbelievable because you, you are. It is like an end of the. It's not like technically an end of the date fart, but it's like 
You're holding it in. I've I've done it a couple times. I farted while getting head one time. That was tough. No. Yeah, that was tough. No. Yeah. When well, you came or just during? While I came. So <laughs> total relaxation. <laughs> I think Bay's like when you fart, come after you fart, they're kind. Of, you fart after you come. They're kind of, I think they're kind of like they are not happy about that, dude. If I fucked, if a girl was like, I'm coming, I'm, I'm, I'd be like, yeah, baby, get that out. I'd get into that. The fact that like I like you were so relaxed that you farted, I, I'd count. That's kind of like squirt territory. I've actually counted that. I've dated a, a quote unquote squirter, and she just farted the entire time. <laughs> I dated a squirter before. So we do. Yeah, like fart and stuff. Who am I? Sex. Yeah, she would fart when I went down. Or, <laughs> damn! So a girl was giving you a head, and you let out a boop. Like, no, they were light. Was, I was no, crumbing. Was I was crumbing, and it was like a machine gun, like <laughs> like a quick. <laughs> Like a, like a rapid burst. And it was like, were you screaming? Because I know you're well, audible yeah, I'm like, oh, my, oh, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. Uh, uh. Yeah, so I like apologize while I'm coming. So you were making noise out of your mouth. You were coming and farting. All your orifices. All you That's were what I'm saying. excreting it. I might have hit the seventh you're like dimension. like Dr. Manhattan. That's seventh. <laughs> That's seventh. That might have been when I became a six dimensional entity. True. When I farted while I came. Moan. Yeah, dude. Fart and come at the same time. I'm a moan, fart, cum complex, dude. Wow. Damn. Real MFC here, dude. For sure, bro. <laughs> so you're saying Sodi's claims no Reddit? Well, it's it's almost it's, like it's no fat. Something that like yeah, and I'll, I'll I've claimed it too. We've all claimed it. We've been like, man, you gotta. I'm off. Yeah, I'm you off. Gotta it. Delete that. Like even when I was going through the whole SNL thing, which I did for like a week, delete everything. Sure. I would still, you know, occasionally go to the website on my phone, but I had the apps That's off. So funny. And uh, which that was a that was a tough one. That was, <laughs> you know, that was an easy one to stay away from. Oh yeah. The Reddit was a refuge. True. Except for every once in a while, people be like, "He's a pussy for not." Fun. It's like, dude. True, but the what most more do you want? For the most part, people were. I would say during that, that was when that was when I was like, "Damn, these dudes fucking." Rule. It would be insane for me to be like, oh, "Fuck you, fuck it." It's like you don't know everything that's going on. Yeah, I mean, Chill. it's also yeah. Yeah, I know, I know, I know. There was something like I said. I I, I do think without the risk of uh, being like fucking. There's something to be said about like some things you just let go of being like, all right, bro, like. Yeah, like I'm not, you know, I'm not going to get all elitist on you, but it's like you, you, like, what the fuck would you do? Yeah, you know, I don't really fuck with armchair quarterbacking. True, I do, but not when it's me that's the quarterback. Oh, exactly. <laughs> when I I'm do, on the other I do end it of it, I'm like, why are you guys doing that? <laughs> yeah, I do it all the time. When people yeah. hit me with, so I can if you sit and think, dude, someone attacked me on the fucking Patreon. What? Why? Well, I just did like a, a psychology talk with one dude, and some dude was just like, what the fuck. Give me my five bucks back. And it's like, dude, take your five bucks. Oh, but really? In that moment, it, we're just, I was like bullshitting with this dude. Yeah. Pretty tight, actually. I get into the whole, I want to basically take a, uh, take the Shat Nation local chapter, start a moose lodge basically around Shat Nation and different, and just have it. It's not like a for profit thing. I want to start a thing that if it can be sustained by just people coming to it and be like, all right, here's how much the rent. We're, we're going to do just like a place people can get yoked, talk, do, do whatever the fuck they want. Like almost Guy like a bar. Just a lodge, bro. It'd be you a want fucking guy heaven. It's bro heaven, bro. It's guy heaven. So it's like a moose. This lodge. is Sam Hyde. Guy heaven. Guy heaven. <laughs> <laughs> I want to build a moose lodge and have chapters and it, see if it can actually do that. So that's uh, what I was talking about. It'd be tight. Uh, it would be tight. Or just start organizing and getting in groups. Why are people scared of that? Well, that's yeah. You, well, <laughs> what do you mean? Why are people scared of that? What's the problem, dude? People there were, is no problem. It's we were just talking funny. about all, yeah. We're it is funny because that's what I said. Like all you have to do. If we got if we got our listeners. If we put together a moose lodge that was also guy heaven, a sick gym. What is guy heaven? Guy heaven. <laughs> Sam Hyde has a clip of him like <laughs> that clip from Million Dollar Extreme where he, he's in the gym. Mm. Have you ever seen that? Yeah, actually, I did. Where he's I did. like <laughs> slamming weights and shit. And he's <laughs> like, shut up, and then he's, <laughs> dude. Uh, he's chugging milk, throwing up. Yeah. Uh, he's like, I want to start my own gym. Just guys or something like that. <laughs> Call it guy heaven. <laughs> it's so fucking funny. Uh, but I want to start like an ancient Greek, like you a coliseum, a not a cult, like, like a col- like a church built on ancient Greek values, where it's on, like on Hellenic values, where it's nude, like, nude in there only, or just like no, no, not even nude. But it's are like, bays allowed? They could come, they could come, but they'd have to sit and watch. Like you'd walk in, you could fucking start wrestling people. You could debate someone in another corner. People would get like fucked up on fucking. So it's Amber. like a mosque where there's a section for women. No, they could come if they want, but again, if they, you know, it would just they'd have to figure out what they want to do for fun. But it would be, I would try to have it where you could go get yoked, hang out with people, chill. At the YMCA. 
Yeah, but like more, a little more niche, if that makes sense. Yeah. If you could like go to the YMCA in like one corner, and you could just do- get like super blazed and fucking channel in one corner, get yoked, wrestle, have fucking debates on another side. What about my sick. corner? Do I get a corner? But you could do All whatever those you are want. your corners. You can do whatever you want. Do That's I get a bar? Is there yes, a bar? Yes, dude. Oh, dude. Of course, there's gonna be a bar. All right, good. Exactly. Where do you want to build it? I don't I mean, know. The first one's got to be in Philly. Exactly. So you want to set up a yeah, basically a secret brotherhood. So it's like yeah, basically come big the moose lodge. It's like can girls go to a moose lodge? Sure, sure. Do they want to? No. So <laughs> they, they want to? No. But some of them end up living there, and you see some old ladies there, and it gets pretty sad. And you yeah, see, I know. Man, what's sadder than a lady at a fucking like VFW? That's like a regular. I haven't. I mean, I've only. I'm in and out. I've, of those. I've seen a couple. I've I've gone to the Elks with my dad, and you see some rough and tumble ladies in there. I mean, that must be a, a pretty easy scoop. Seeing the Lone Bay in a VF in like a fucking Elks Lodge. These are nasty bays, bro. I know. But these aren't the best looking boys either. <laughs> <laughs> There's some nasty boys. It is a safe space to get old and fat in, like an Elf an Elks Lodge. Elks Lodge, you can you can walk in obese as fuck and people be like, Yeah, that's good. <laughs> you look good. I know. But that's what we were talking we were talking yeah. about doing that. How like he, the dude's a, a psychologist and he was talking about how like he was saying how like online groups are like it's good for people to get together and like it helps people to talk and you know blah blah blah. And we're talking about uh, I was like I'm trying to take that into the fucking physical reality. Yeah. And have little Elks lodges that pop up where people could do stuff, hang out, chill. Kind of like a church, not a church. Tax wise, definitely a church. I also want to start a thing called the Church of Weed and Comedy, which is a comedy club, and write it as, sign it up as a church. Why is weed in there? It would be a space people could smoke weed during comedy shows. Church of Weed and Comedy. You could you could use weed as a religious sacrament. It's like the government's not allowed to for, forbid you to use plant matters if it's a religious sacrament. And then you could just throw comedy shows, and it would just be a nonprofit. All the stuff all the stuff goes to the church, and you pay out the comedians. Bam. Church of Weed and Comedy, baby. Also, I signed us up for a 420 stink tank at Flotation Philly. Who's so us? Get ready for that. <laughs> if you want to, <laughs> who come, the fuck <laughs> is us? What do you got? A mouse in your pocket? <laughs> Who's us? At Flotation Philly. Oh, sick! That'd be pretty tight, On man. Four twenty. Yeah, four twenty. Blaze it, or that weekend, sometime around then. Whenever we'll figure it out, dude. It could fit like sixty people or so. Oh, you're trying to have a meeting of the dogs? Yeah, dude. Four twenty. I, I mean, if we do it live, film it, and people could even go down and float and shit, dude. It'd be tight. I don't know if people would do that during the show because I don't know if the guy wants to man. You want to do a show there at the float, dude? The fucking place is sick. I've been there. The new one? No. On, uh... front, on front Street. There's a new one on Front Street. There's a room that would probably fit like sixty dogs. I don't think I have. It'd be tight, dude. Yeah, I'd be down. It I'd be down be to do that. That'd be fun. It would be tight. It's a stink tank. Not need I say more, bro? Yeah, get ugly. This, in this there. is the secret brotherhood. This is what I'm talking about. I can. So this is where the beginning. This is how the Mason started. I can say stink tank, and people are like, "Oh yeah, I know the deal." And it's like, "Yeah, bro, come through, dog." Okay. Mm. Be tight. Film it, dude. We could film a stink tank live with like 60 people. I want to film so... you naked in one of the stink tanks. <laughs> in the tank. That'll be the intro, dude. I'll just hold my bird. <laughs> naked. In I'll there. hold my bird and lay in the thing. That'd be so fucking fun, dude. It would be. That would be really such funny. a good video. Yeah. Of like leading up to it afterwards. <sighs> What's up? What you thinking about? I'm trying to think of me getting high around the dogs, dude. What's the matter? It would be fucking <laughs> wild, man. Because every once in a while, you run into a wild dog, dude. Well, you can a run. Dog that's fucking you could be too le- much. at the end, dude. You can, we'll put a robe on, like a little <laughs> marathoner's, like a tinfoil blanket, and lead you down to the fucking chamber. Oh, that reminds me. Yo, listen to. Uh, have you listened to Woods' new podcast? No, I haven't, dude. Listen to Oral Presentations. It's called Oral Presentations. That's Woods' podcast. Dude, Wood has a podcast right now. That's just it, he just started. Mm-hmm. It's Wood with his fucking accent. Oh, fuck. And like, I don't know. It's just something I'm trying out right now. <laughs> Dude, it is so fucking funny. <laughs> oh, fuck. He's like, I'm going to talk about a little thing. You know, I like to talk a little. It's called the 1904 Olympics. He does, he does, a, he does basically, uh, he calls them oral presentations, but he does like a history cast on, okay. on the 1904 Olympics. On strictly not, he's big into World War II, isn't he? He is big into world. He's big into history. But the way he gets his history is he watches. Documented. First off, all he does is watch YouTube. <laughs> he doesn't watch anything else. He watches YouTube from like 9 p.m. to like 4 a.m. Yeah. Like top 10 scariest houses. <laughs> he, he's the guy watching those. You know all those fucking retarded <laughs> countdown yeah. videos yeah. that are like 23 minutes long? Wood on a mattress in a shitty room in Philly is the guy watching that. 
Oh my god! But yeah, the first one was actually really, really funny. That's awesome, man. I, yeah. Him alone is him alone reading this, dude. It's so funny. Then he calls the fire festival the Fye festival throughout the whole thing. You remember the fire festival? The guy who had that. Yeah. Why is he called the Fye festival? He think, I think he thought that's what it was called. It's <laughs> like, really, it's really great to hear. It's really, as soon like as the he starts, store Fye. He calls it the Fye festival. Why? And that's what I thought it was at first. I didn't realize he was fucking up. Oh, man. I thought he meant the Fye, like the store that sells like electronics, right? Yeah, that's what I thought. Yeah, Fire right? Festival was not. Yeah, Fye is for your entertainment, I believe. Yeah, well, maybe he got the, it right. The, the hit. Well, I don't think they were. That wasn't Fye's festival. They definitely Fire didn't festival have a festival. Was one that no, was no, 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 no. But scheme. what he's talking about is the guy. There was a booker who who was trying to set up like a fair type thing mm-hmm. in St. Louis, which is where the Olympics were. That was like a. Look at all these new inventions type thing. Like a World Fair. Which that's why up. it kind of made sense to me that he was saying FYE. Yeah. But then it turns out he was just trying to say Fire Festival because he was making fun of a bad booker putting together gotcha. a shitty festival. He kept calling the FYE so like festival. I was giving him the benefit of the doubt and being like, yeah, yeah, FYE Festival. All right, all right. And then I listened to it with Beezer, and he's like, fucking idiot. <laughs> I was like, nice. <laughs> I, wanna get, I might buy some stock in FYE. It's a cutting-edge company, dude. DVDs, magazines, CDs. They're all coming back. Dude, that's fucking... That guy's a genius. DVDs? They're still in the mall, right? I don't know. I haven't seen one in a while. I, th- I Dude, have you been to I like... I have been to the fucking mall in a while. I went to the mall... I gotta fucking do Christmas shopping tomorrow. Dude, I just started. Oh, yeah, it's Christmas. Just started. This, what, this, is, this should be a holiday special, dude. It is, dude. <laughs> How? It just is. True. <laughs> We're so emboldened by the holiday spirit, we don't even have to fucking discuss it. Exactly. I'm it just so, goes without saying. So stoked. On, no, it's weird, too, with the malls. So if you have a mall, the stores are all inside. Those buildings are failing. But if you just take oh. the mall and put them outside in a strip of stores now, like, a, you know, like the nice shopping plazas yeah. or whatever, they're crushing it. But like indoor malls, no. If you put them outside and put a fountain outside, crushes, dude. And like a Moe's Southwestern Grill, it's you kill it. I went to, in Worcester, when I was there, I went to a mall that was abandoned. Like, every single store had been gone. Dude, like, that's it how the, was scary to look at. That's how the Mall was. What was there? Like, bookstores? They had like, a fucking TJ Maxx at, like, you know how they have, like, yeah, it was at the end of, like, a long hallway. It was crossed out It was, like, TJ Maxx. Big-ass TJ Maxx was still, still going. Tight. And uh, Bed Bath & Beyond was still going. And then there was, like, a food court. Still going. Yeah. With like two restaurants of the like 19 slots. Like every, it was crazy. It's awkward, dude. It's weird to see like a failing economy. The Granite Run Mall was like that. And it, it, a lot of the partners come, that's when the partners the come. Partners through, move in bro. and fucking there was, fix it, dude. There was these weird books. I was in there you and there was like. Best to buy. There was huge. <laughs> you think like the Chai Coms come in and start like counterfeiting? Chai Coms, Chai Coms dude. <laughs> this is strictly partners. This is Japanese businessmen. Oh, okay. They're coming and save American I balls. was thinking more like the Chai Coms coming in just opening like a bootlegged Best Buy. True. <laughs> yeah, this was like a bookstore. That would be a good store, like Bar uh, bar Rescue. Except just... Malls? Asian... <laughs> the Tokyo Partners coming in and rescuing malls. That'd be tight, dude. Yeah. It was like they were coming in and it would be like a bookstore slash like knickknack store slash like... They would sell like like weird like fountains you could put in your head. It was like I walked in the store being like, "What the fuck?" It was the weirdest fucking yeah. shit. I don't know how they were just chilling in this thing, and I'm like, "Dude, nobody's coming to an abandoned mall to buy books." And then you'll, the guy will come and like set up like sports cards and be like, "What's good?" <laughs> <laughs> I think if you drop the rent enough, you just get like farmers market dudes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Who are just like, "Fuck yeah, dude! I can set up my hologram Ken Griffey Jr. cards, dude." Like, yeah. Just, that's a piece of his actual jersey. Did you ever see dudes rent like a, a, a ta- like a table at the mall and yeah. just like post up with fucking sports memorabilia and it's like, "Bro, what how?" Yeah, what is going on? <laughs> how the fuck? You remember are being you young enough to be like this card's going to be worth something. I better keep this in the case. I had a Ken Griffey uh rookie card in the case. I lost. I don't know what the fuck it is. I could have fucking retired got, off that, bro. True. Could have fucking retired you off. You would have got like Eight bucks on Dude, eBay. People used to hold Beanie Babies being like, yo, this thing's about to make bang. <laughs> yeah. Beanie Babies was a thing where, like, yo, this is actually like, I remember people. That was like, like Bitcoin. Tr- Beanie Babies were Beanie like. Beanie Babies Bitcoin. were Bitcoin, big time. They come through and be like, no, dude, this Beanie Babies really rare. It's probably, it's worth like 900 bucks. Yeah. I remember and thinking, like, being like, I'll give you 10 bucks for it. 
Yeah, for sure, dude. <laughs> they're, you can't. They're, they're absolutely worth. Find a right used now. stuffed animal. Imagine how fucking stupid you have to be. Who who turns this like weird beanie baby economy? Like, how do you get a thing and be like, no, these are actually worth a lot? Of like, dude, I've never understood collectorship. No. Besides, I used to collect rocks when I was little. That was kind of tight. But I, I wasn't. You just go outside. That wasn't for the rock. money. I, yeah, you I just, just did it for the love. Of I just the game. liked having cool rocks around me. Yeah, I wasn't like this thing's gonna be worth money. When people buy Beanie Babies and like Pogs, I, I had cards. I had sports cards. I, I had, had a couple. I had so many. Did you really? Yeah, I had fucking older cousins and people would just dump them on me. Yeah, I'd literally have tubs of fucking cards, dude. They're, I insane. There, I know someone who still tries to eke out a like partial living selling like selling, sports, selling baseball cards. And it's like I I was always puzzled by it. I'm just kind of like it's hard bro, to watch. How it's kind of like, scary. What do you? Yeah, exactly. It was just kind of like, well, you did it. Make forty five bucks, and it's like, uh, it's like okay. Mm. I mean, I don't know. That's just me though. I value my time there. You know, where are we at time wise? Hour and fifteen minutes. You hit pause on us. I'm gonna toss in a little dipski. Let's do it, bro. Let's roll, baby. We back. Rock and roll, dude. We back. Rock and roll, dude. How hard do you believe in Santi? Yeah. Big time, dude. That's, that's what I'm saying. Enough that like I'm ashamed of my ancestors who didn't believe. Oh, for sure, bro. My that's... entire my family's stupid. My entire race is stupid. Santifa. That's what I'm saying, dude. I'm rising. I up. fight to, you know. I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna spoil. I might throw a can of worms in the family dinner talk. Slam the table and be like, "You guys even fucking care what today's even about?" Let's go buy my little plate of milk and cookies and be like. <laughs> <laughs> You're going to leave milk and cookies out? Am I? Yeah. Yeah. You better. I always do. Good. I still leave them out. Yeah, I'm going to leave them out. Wait, when was St. Nicholas Day? I didn't leave my fucking shoe out. Uh, you you forgot? I left the shoe Fuck. out. Fuck. I got some sweet treats. What'd you get? Twix. Fruity Tootsie Roll? I got Twix. Did you really? Yep. And then in the spirit Fuck. of St. Nicholas, I broke it. I, I shared it. I gave one to Christopher and one to Brian. I said, you know what? You guys have my Twix. And St. Nicholas smiled upon me. You think so? Definitely. Fuck, I'm pissed. I missed it. Dude, I remember yeah. when I was younger missing St. Nicholas Day and be like, fuck. <laughs> I was making myself laugh thinking about uh, Santa's coal mine. What coal mine? Yeah, you know, it gives out coal to everybody. True. You must have a, the, everybody always shows the toy shop elves. Must be a pretty <laughs> rough other end of that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was actually thinking the other day about like just a kid getting coal. Like there had to have been kids out there. My dad like, got coal. Just just one lump he of coal. He told me there was several years where he got just a lump of coal. Oh, dude. Young what's Phil, that, what's tiny that, Phil. What's that do to a person? That just lets you know your parents are poor. True, but I mean, like, <laughs> yeah. what the fuck? If you're a poor parent, you can just be like, listen, this is your fault. You're a piece of shit. Fuck. Santa doesn't like you. <laughs> <laughs> was he being bad? Yeah, Phil was a bad He's a bad boy. And he got a lump of coal. He got a lump of coal, <laughs> dude. He did. Be... I'm certain he got a lump of coal one year. I mean, imagine how hard you believed in Santa when you were little. Oh, and it comes out like, that, man, he, he thinks I suck. <laughs> the Christmas excitement. Like, I remember, like, waking up Christmas Eve and being like, I like I couldn't even fucking sleep the oh, night before. So fucking Finally fun, waking dude. up and Fuck. being like, yes, yes, and running downstairs and seeing a fucking lot. He must have fucking screamed. He must have fucking <laughs> no, cried. You couldn't scream, dude. You get your ass whooped. I mean, dude, something inside of him died. For I sure. I mean, the third lump of coal is I probably I mean, that's like, where you punch a dog in the head oh. when you're 50. <laughs> <laughs> that's where you punch Riggins on the top of his head. <laughs> I mean, dude, that's fucking horrible. Yeah. I'm surprised he hasn't like, vacuum sealed Riggins' head yet. <laughs> True. <laughs> yeah, God I mean. God damn. Lump of coal for a kid is, de- but again, it was like the you know it was like the early sixties. Like, I mean, I think he was living on a creek in Central PA. Yeah, nineteen sixties. Like it's not like he was like. I mean, and they didn't have like lump support groups back then for nah, kids. You who got, got a lump of coal and you showed up to school and the kids were like, "What'd you get?" And he's like, "Fucking coal." Fuck man. you, dude. Santa just told me to go fuck myself. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I had been with all the religious stuff tied to that. That had been pretty synonymous with like going to hell. Phil, my dad had a rough Santa Claus journey. <laughs> now that I think about it, because the other story that's like my favorite story, I think I've told it on here, was his dad died. My dad's dad died when he was young. Okay, and then that year for Christmas, his older brother, I think it was his old. No, his his older brother dressed up like Santa Claus mm-hmm. to like because Phil. And his younger brother er, and his sisters are young. Okay. And the brother's like seven or eight years older. So he was like, 
going to surprise them and like pretend to be Santa Claus. You know, it was a rough time. What do you do when the What did he do when the real Santa Claus showed up? True, true. <laughs> Straight up Santa Fa, but he got drunk oh, and God. fell off the roof. Fuck. So all the little kids were like excited for Santa, and then Santa just was just drunk and fell, and they're like, "Oh my God, Santa!" <laughs> <laughs> it just came out was him, and he was all shit faced. And then a year later. That Santa gave him a lump of coal. Yeah, man. So it must have been like, what the fuck yeah, is man, going Santa's on? Yeah, man, Santa's a dickhead, dude. Well, apparently that... uh, that was, that was also one of the lie. I remember lying and saying I saw Santa. What? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's not a lie, bro. I remember... You just believed. No, no, no. I remember saying I saw his sled. <laughs> to who? To, like, my aunt, who knew I was lying. How old were you? I was young, obviously. Okay. But I, was, I still, even then, knew she knew I was lying. Fuck. Just the, just the way her path of questions. Oh, that's fucked like up. Like she was just fucking with me like, oh, yeah. Like shit like that. And I was like, yeah. <laughs> like, I remember being like, yeah, what the fuck is your problem? I like, I vividly remember that lie. That's so oh. funny. And she was just like, really now? Yeah. Did you I claim remember, to hear I, bells? Dude, one time. I got a great Christmas story. Now we're in the holiday spirit. Hell yeah. The local news said there was too much fog and you had to ring a bell so Santa could find your house. <laughs> It <laughs> fucked me up, dude. I was spazzing. Were you ringing a bell? I broke a bell. <laughs> Did you really I broke the bell ringing it. <laughs> I was like, come on, come on, Santa. <laughs> yeah, man. He found your house? He found my house. Oh, Santa was man. always good. He was good to me. Dude, I was like... Actually, he was okay. Fucking... What did he get you? I always got average. Yeah. And then my, you know, you'd see other kids with their fucking ball and shit. Crazy shit. I get nothing. I got a PlayStation 2 once. That's a, that's like good. Like eighth grade. That's that was Santa, sick. That's Santa coming through. That was, and I, st- yeah, that was big for Santa. I, I, the best thing I ever got on Christmas was that remote, remote control car that could flip over and still drive. Fuck. Remember that thing? Yes. Dude, I got that one year and it was just like, fuck my, I was too the fucking Yo, mood. did you guys have to go to church after you opened gifts? Yeah, it fucking sucks. Whoa, suck, how dude. much does that suck? Fuck. You get all these sick toys and then you immediately have to go to church for an yeah, hour. Yeah, dude. Fuck. And then the parking lot's and it's packed. Just, like, just let me go home and play with this fucking uh, toy. We used to, sometimes we go to midnight mass. That was fucking dank. You get, well, we, that was when we, got, when we got older. We go to midnight yeah, mass, yeah, yeah. come home, everyone gets to trade one present. We do like a family Pollyanna. Yeah. Midnight mass, come home around one o'clock, eat some sweet treats. Some people drink a little coffee and then it's like, here's all the presents for the, you know, the, the siblings. Then you wake up and Santa comes. And Santa has come. That's it. It's the best. Watching a little kid who genuinely thinks Santa. I'm going to get to see. Still believes. I'm going to get to see the kids enjoy it this year. Dude, it's the best. Uh, it's the fucking. I'm going to cry, I think. Dude, I, I can't buy Hallmark <laughs> cards anymore without crying. When I, I was in Target getting a, a, a card for Brittany, and I was reading it, and I was just like, Phew. the last couple times I've got them, I'm like. I'm Yo, the there's aisle. a fucking Apple commercial right now that makes me cry. What is it? This is Grandpa. It's I think Gramps. they play the Up music. Oh man! And this, uh, the his granddaughter makes like a slideshow on the tablet that has Grandma like photoshopped into it. Is Grandma they, dead? Yeah. Jesus, dude. Yeah. That's kind of that's enough. That's too that's much bullshit. That's too much, dude. There was one. I was watching. There's a commercial. There's a girl, a, t- a little girl in bed, a, in a hospital bed. Mm-hmm. And the, a nurse walks in, and she's like, she sticks her arm out because she's clearly getting chemo. She's like, more treatment today? And the nurse is like, different kind of treatment today. And a dog comes in, and it's like a nice dog, mm-hmm. like a you know a treatment animal. Yeah. And then they're like, pedigree, dog food. Fuck, man. Like, why, why, why are you showing me a kid with cancer? That, I'm telling you, that's the move. To buy the dog food. That's the move. And then they show like a dead, a grandpa, an old man crying with his granddaughter on his lap. Yeah, he's like, that's her, isn't it? It's like oh, Jesus Christ, dude. Fuck, what are we doing? That'd be tight to bring like Shamaloni and twist to those commercials, and the grandmom standing behind is like, shh, like dementia, <laughs> <laughs> aftercare, dementia, <laughs> sunrise, assisted living, dude. That'd be tight. Yo, because they, they, commercials are like, well, dude, I saw a lady today in Whole Foods with a, a shopping like you know people bring their own shopping bags. Yeah, it's like this bag saved, this bag fed four rescue dogs. It's like what? What is this need to broadcast all of this weird good word? It's so bizarre, dude. I'm telling you, it reminds me of back in the day when people could buy their way into heaven through church. Yeah, and now you can do it. You know, in a certain sense, through like 
buying sugar from Cameroon and being like, well, yeah, I helped a warlord who uses (laughs) child generals, (laughs) child soldiers. Yeah, dude. Anyway, dude, let's get back to the Christmas spirit. Exactly, exactly. I'm so hyped on Christmas spirit. Going to fucking church. The lights in my house, like the Christmas lights at night on the tree. Come on. You come downstairs in the come morning. On. Come downstairs. And it's like kind of so early. The light. It's like kind of dark out. And you see the lights, and you're like, "Whoa! I didn't see that bicycle when I went to bed." Mm-hmm. Dude, it's unbelievable. It's it's ecstasy. It really is sheer ecstasy. It really is. You come down to the fucking. It's kind of still dark out. The, the lights are blinking. The elves are like, my mom has these weird ass fucking like wire form elves that you can kind of put in a different we used to always we had like a wire form elf wire form santa and we used to bend miss the santa over and have the <laughs> santa like, like, who's messing with the elves again <laughs> yeah we used to do that with the reindeer yeah you make them people hump. put out front oh dude, and uh we sick. used to do it in my neighborhood we would make the reindeer fuck and then you know, on people's front yards yeah, hilarious so funny. so funny so but funny. when i my ex-girlfriend's grandparents lived in my neighborhood and i didn't know mm. And they were talking about how every year that would happen. And I was just like, whoa, that was me. Did you know anyone who ever... That was me. Did you know anyone who ever popped those things? No, I think that's fucked up. I have I have been a part of that. And I <laughs> wasn't... I really regret it, to be honest. <laughs> I remember just getting out. I remember being... I don't know who it was. When someone run up, they watched this. And be like, <laughs> <laughs> they're like a hundred bucks a piece. I know, which also now that I'm an adult, I'm like, yeah, good. What, pop them? Good. Fuck those dickheads that have those giant inflatable things and them getting popped. <laughs> it's, it's, you're just down 100 bucks, and you don't have to store that thing True. 360 <laughs> days a year in your fucking garage. You think some of it might be like an inside job? Like, you fucking oh. popped our floating Santa Claus, or like our little snow, our floating yeah. snow globe. That's dude to go for. It. It's funny too to be like, "Daddy, the snow globe's dead." <laughs> Some dude just walked by, like, oh, stabbed it. <laughs> Fuck, man, I'm excited. I'm fucking stoked. I got Christmas spirit. Usually now. Christmas, I have a tradition where I get stoned and I drive around and look at all the. Chris- I go to like a nice neighborhood and look at all the Christmas lights. Oh, we do this thing in my neighborhood. Awesome. Uh, uh, luminaries, they call it. They just put bags of sand with a candle. That's on the tight. curbs, on all the curbs. That's fuck. That's sick. like lining the streets. It looks fucking. Nuts. That's awesome. And then you can always see the Jew house doesn't have no. <laughs> I mean, they participate. Do they? They, they do. Everybody loves it. They don't. They put, they put the they fucking. Can still have candles. They enjoy. It. <laughs> you see the Jew house. <laughs> yeah, that's how you know. Oh, that's funny. But yeah, the Christmas spirit is. Do they? How many candles do they have outside their driveway? Seven. Eight. Add it. Yeah, yeah. No, I thought it was twelve. So I don't know. Fucking know. I don't know. Probably, it's probably eight or something. I don't know. Yeah, the, uh, more than eight. The, is it? To eight it's crazy 12. nights. Wait. Twelve nights of Christmas. Okay. I'm, no. I'm sorry. I'm so Christian. I thought it was 12. My bad. <laughs> sorry. I'm so Christian. <laughs> I don't respect you. No, I'm just saying I don't know them. Um. Yeah, dude. That was coming downstairs, man. Christmas Day. Get down early. You ever get down early before everyone? For sure, I did that. Yeah, a little sneaky move, tear open a fucking corner, peek, oh, run back dude, up. Dude, that's fucking. <sighs> like, I know what everyone has. Yes, that's pretty tight. Yeah, I'm still geeking on what. So, what happens with Hanukkah? Do you? Is it just kind of like you get a gift every day for eight days, right? Yeah, and I think that they are. They've they've seen enough Christmas that they want a piece. Oh, and I think dude, they they Christmas four. out. I that think would they that would piss out. me the fuck off. I think. I think Jews that are like a little older now really got fucked. For sure. They got like shitty Hanukkah. Do you have the, the young Jews ahead. that are growing up now gotcha. or like our age or younger have, have they've they've got a very Americanized How many Hanukkah. How many young Jewish kids do you think have gotten stiffed on Christmas and resorted <laughs> unknowingly to a slur in the context of like calling their mom and dad a Jew? <laughs> you fucking Jew! I hate Christmas. I, hate <laughs> I wish we were fucking Jewish. And you slap your hon- your yarmulke down and run up the steps. <laughs> definitely, definitely. Dude, that must be so hard oh, to watch everyone come out with their new bikes and fucking toys and shit. And you're just like, fuck! I hate being Jewish. <laughs> Don't worry, young Jew. Someday you'll own all of their bikes. <laughs> Someday all those dumb Christians, you will own. Is that what City Bike's about? Did you ever see like, the blue rental bike? <laughs> could be. So that could be a Jew so that got just stiffed just on just fucking scheme, Hanukkah. Just scheming, dude. For decades. Just like, I'm going to fucking own all the bikes. We're starting Bike Empire. Yeah. Oh, that's so fucking funny. we got to look just, into the toy industry and see if any the Jays are behind it. 
the toy industry? I bet they are. You think the Jays invented Christmas? I think Christmas, the Jays bro? control the toy industry. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, dude, let them. That Christmas joy is so. I'm still laughing about it. I mean, it has to be a conversation. Jewish households, Jewish households, were like, "What the fuck? This fucking sucks." Yeah, but in their defense, they do get several days before Christmas. You know what I mean? True. So there's a few days of like, check this out, check this out. Coming into school with a new toy. I mean, being like, "Damn, what? Where are you getting that?" Yeah, but it's what? what's going on with that? True. But then the payoff is everybody comes back from Christmas and it's like. Whoo, Gear, I mean the gear, loaded. Yeah, and you come back and your gear's just right for. That's like, all I had every year. That's <laughs> all my Christmas clothes gear. was Christmas clothes. <laughs> <laughs> my mom dictated my clothing for years. Yeah, dude, I remember I caught a pair of bullheads one year, dude. Wide, like Jinko leg length flare, dude, and just went into dress really? down day. I couldn't. Jinko jeans. I had bullheads. What are they? So they were like they were of the wider leg variety, but not as wide as Jenkos. You had wide jeans. I I was a skater, bro. Fuck. I was a skater, surfer, snowboarder from San Diego, bro. Of course, I fucking true. That's how you got surfers. I those Jenkos you were wearing. Bullheads, bro. The bullheads got in your system. I got system. them from Pac Sun. They were khakis that had a white stripe, and they were so fucking wide, dude. They're almost as wide. My mom wouldn't let me let me get Jenkos because they were fifty bucks. Jenkos are. Wild. She was like, if you if you want, I'm not paying. Remember, she remember they had like the little cartoon character on the back pocket. Dude, anyone who had Jinkos at CN Skate Palace was a fucking man. Fuck. I just wanted to fucking. Thank listen. God I played sports then. I played sports a little bit. Skateboard. I played extreme sports, dude. Yeah. Fucking let me get up to the camera and stick my tongue out, dude. <laughs> dude, I fucking. Uh, no, nah, no showboating. I remember no I, showboating on my end, bro. Mom, all showboat. I'm all hot dog. <laughs> I said hot dogging in school the other day. And someone goes, what the fuck's hot dogging? And I explained hot it to dog? him. He started cracking up. He's like, that's the funniest fucking thing I've ever hey, heard. Hey, you're hot dogging. I'm like, you ever heard of hot dogging, bro? He's like, no, I have no idea what you're talking about. And I explained <laughs> it to him. He's like, that's fucking hilarious. Um, yeah, Chris, bullheads. Christmas is hot dogging. Hanukkah is just good. True. Run the football. Hand the ball to the ref. Christmas is big time hot dog. Yeah, that's like being down by 10, still dancing after you get a sack. <laughs> I don't understand. What the fuck are you celebrating? I mean, come on. Yeah, that's big time hot dog. I'm, I'm still, I mean, again, I don't know. That's got to be tough. I mean, you got to have the guilt on you as a Jewish parent to like Christmas Day to be like. I, th- I know. I'm saying they do. They do that. So now they're hyping it up. I think now it's definitely more like give you a bunch of gifts. We'll give you they have like a Christmas. Christmas month. Type thing, gotcha. I think they had, yeah. Mm, I don't know how I feel about that. Mm, I feel yeah. appropriated. I think they have appropriated. You think, I think we kind of jammed it down the throat, but also True. slight appropriation. What slight appropriation? You th- oh, you think on their end? It's they, a slight appropriation, but also everyone really kind of don't have a choice, ass. dude. Yeah, it's so irresistible, dude. I mean, honestly, they must kind of reel at our pagan roots of like the tree, the the evergreen mm-hmm. tree. Fucking the shoe out and all that stuff. It must honestly probably be a turnoff. It's like, Perhaps. nah, dude, this is a, this is a fucking this is all about the oil. What's the best gift you got? <sighs> I don't know. I think mine's the. I think I got a PlayStation Two in eighth grade. I think that was my best gift. My best gift was my bicycle with a radio attached to it. Free Spirit. I wanted a green. That's bike. awesome. I wanted a green bike. That's the first time Santa slipped. I asked for a green bike. My sister asked for a purple bike. I got a purple bike with a radio on it. But I was like, whatever. I can yeah. still bump too. I can still bump fucking. How tubes. old were you? Fuck man, I was probably like six. I was back when I still lived in Haverton. Wow. So that was Santa. That was Santa, bro. I remember coming down and being like, oh, Santa makes mistakes. I was like, well, you know, he's got a lot on his mind. <laughs> Santa makes mistakes. I remember thinking, like, well, I didn't ask for, I asked for a green's my favorite color, not purple. And I was just kind of like, well, whatever. And I'm I not like, going to say anything. I was, dude, I was still like, this is fucking sick. <laughs> That's I nice. I would bust that thing around, crank fucking under the bridge. I wanted the chili a BB peppers. gun. I wanted a BB gun. Yeah. I Never know. got that. I asked for a BB gun. I think I got a uh, marksman slingshot. That was pretty. No, did I have one of those? I think my older brother had one. Excuse me. Uh, you're that, excused. That bike. You know, well, I don't want a slingshot. Lie. You're that, excused. That bike <laughs> was probably, I would say, the dankest thing ever. The bike and the flip over remote control car, easily the two dankest Christmas presents I ever received. PlayStation 2. That's a biggie, dude. Yeah. That was nice. And the way Santee delivered it to me How? was he hid it behind the couch. You thought it was over. So they got to see me fucking half, half fucking like, God damn it, dude. The one thing I asked for, you motherfuckers couldn't get me. They wanted to see if I would be grateful or not. Really? If I would be a little brat. That's, that's Cole mentality, and I dude. And I did not brat. Really? You were like, I oh, shucks, brat. guys. I did not brat. In my head, I bratted so hard. You're like, fuck 
so hard. And then they were like, why don't you check out Behind the Couch? And I was like, yes, I knew it. I knew it. I knew you guys weren't pieces of shit. Fucking big. <laughs> Damn, only someone who's gotten coal would put you through that yep. test. That was a rite of passage, dude. That was a big test. Being a Christmas brat is where I might go home and brat out for Christmas. Being a Christmas brat stinks. Dude, it's so fucking funny. Yeah, but they, like, I didn't get what I wanted. That's it? <laughs> yeah, that's yeah. it? That's it? They, they're still opening gifts. I didn't, I'm done with my gifts already. <laughs> I actually do that every year to my mom. Do you really? I tell her that she likes Katie more than me. That's fucking And every funny. year Katie gets more. Well, because Katie always owns like a house or an apartment. So, so my mom gets, buys a ton of fucking yeah. that shit. I get like socks. My mom gives me socks. My mom calls me. She's like, we're not doing a big thing for Christmas this every year. Every year. What do you, I can get you a gift. I'm like, dude, I, I don't want anything. Yeah, I know. I, I, and know, I even I told her, I'm like, dude, I actually will take some socks. I'm at the point now socks. where I can definitely appreciate a new pack of socks. Socks and undies. Yeah. Uh, flashlight. That's all <laughs> I asked for. <laughs> a butthole flashlight. <laughs> dude, next time, yeah, next time my mom asks me, I'm like, I'll have a butthole flashlight, please. Please. Like, you asked. I'm telling. Hell yeah. Motherfucking butthole flashlight. Write it down. Write a list. Write a letter to Santa and just leave it at your parents. I might, dude. I've been getting real, uh, real frisky. I've been having real sexual kind of conversations around my family. Yeah, I don't think they appreciate it. Yeah, that's never good. Because my, I, I walked in. Have the you other been day. around people's families that are open about that? No, I don't think it's so. very. I have. It's very weird. No, I don't think I like have families actually. that make like sexual jokes. I don't think I have, honestly. Yeah, well, I've I walked been in a few. I walked into my parents, and they're like, you know, like my brother's usually there. It's usually a girlfriend's family. For yeah, I mean. Girl the house. family will joke about you fucking. Girl houses are very Dionysian, dude. You yeah. get in there and everyone's like, oh, it's cool. I've dated a girl whose mom was like, I'm going to leave you two guys alone. Have fun. And yeah. kind of like, yuck. Ew. I don't, what the fuck? I'm going to get her pregnant. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> just just <laughs> on principle. Leave us alone. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, dude. The uh, I walked in the other day and my parents were like watching a movie. And, like nobody else. Usually there's like my brother's there, my niece, and like my sisters and stuff are all like kind of there every now and again. And I walked in like real quick, and they like looked over. And I was like, "Whoa, my bad, my bad." And I thought it was an empty house, and they were, my dad was just like, "Dude, chill." And I was just like, eh, "I don't want to bust up your guys' little date." Dude. Ew. He used to do that to me, dude. When I was down there with the chick, he would come in and be like, "Hey, come on, what are you guys doing?" Like all that shit. I fucking yeah, yeah, hit him yeah. with like, "Oh, whoa, forgot it was an empty house." My must bad. Be pretty nice for dads, bro. In hindsight, that's pretty. Well, ca- walking in on walking your... in on a hot teen, like dude. I, Even though dad, it's with your boy, my dad caught me sucking titties, bro. Did he get to see the titties? I mean, she had a starter jacket unzipped and opened, and I lifted him up on my couch sucking titties. So he knew it was going down. <laughs> he knew it was going down. She had an unzipped starter and you were sucking titties? <laughs> I think she had an unzipped San Jose, dude. She had a San Jose Sharks and you were sucking titties? I forget exactly. It was, honestly, I think it was a flyer. I think it was fly guys. Obviously. I think she had a black and orange all, I think she had the black, <laughs> black and orange, and I was fucking sucking titties on the couch. I had like... like 14 ounces of cologne on, sucking titties. <laughs> like, I feel like, Dad, my girlfriend's coming over, and the whole house would smell like fucking Adidas cheap Adidas moves. Yeah. <laughs> that cologne fucking rules. I got to start wearing more cologne. Adidas mo- yeah. We're just wearing cologne. In Tommy general. wears cologne. And Tommy wear was like, me. I can't even wear that. When he, he gets ready, nine times oh, I thought he was talking time. about Tommy wear, like the no. actual Tommy, Tommy, you know, Tommy gear cologne. Tommy wears cologne, and he sprays a fucking ton of it every time he leaves the house. Every time. And I'll, I'm always playing video games by the time he's leaving. What? Do you ever like, like, do you ever, oh, do you ever bring it up? It. I'll cough. I'll give him some like, oh, Jesus, man. What's what going is, on? Is he like, <laughs> like, fucking, <laughs> are you playing video games again? <laughs> Dude, making fun of someone for wearing cologne is the like, easiest to make fun because it's yeah. just kind of like, bro, what, what are you doing? What, what, are you, what are you trying to do here? Are you, yeah, are you trying to what fuck What is that? It? Perfume? Calling it perfume right away is the funniest thing. <laughs> like, Dude, is that perfume? Or calling Sick. someone Pepe Le Pew. <laughs> <laughs> Popey Le Pew. <laughs> Pepe Le Pope. Yeah, dude, making fun of clones is fun. Because then it's on you, so there's nothing you can do. Or going to the mall and walking by the tester station and spraying someone unknowingly like 10 times on their back. That's the fucking move. Mm. So fucking funny. True. Because then they walk and they're like... <laughs> <laughs> and then by the time you get sprayed, it's too late. You've been hit. Dude, yeah. That's the best. That's sick. Especially if you get like two different types of bottles. And sp- I used to go to Boscov's. And spray like you know the tester stations. I'd hit one and hit. I'd hit spray like fifteen different colognes on me and walk around and people would just be like, "What the fuck is your fucking bulldogs?" You or bull- like- <laughs> Dude, you sucked. <laughs> you yeah, my fucking bullheads. You just smell like a fucking like toxic cloud. You just walk around them. I just like walk around the mall and shoplift, and people were like, "Dude, get this guy the fuck out of here." 
<laughs> Fuck. I mean, highly conspicuous pants, putting off like an offensive odor, just walking around stealing stuff. Oh, I got a fucking Christmas shop tomorrow. That's yeah, I gotta, I gotta finish up, man. Going to the mall on Christmas Eve. I'm gonna. Sucks. Well, I'm gonna find a what's that Brookstone store? Full of like cool stuff. That's like that's the one. Like, my parents, I can never buy them anything, but if I see like a tight like seen on TV thing, that's the way you crush your parents. They're like, whoa, fuck. Mm, true. Get them some that glue. Something. Oh man, some, that like tape. Yeah. Oh, like grill. The guy like, that sewed glue. that boat in half. That would be fun. I sold sick. this boat in half. Yeah, dude. My dad would like some high density tape that he's seen on TV. He'd be, be like, nice. This is tight. That would be nice. He that's he good. gave me a. Uh, oh, we're getting Phil a snowblower. I went in on it. Fifteen hunge. Big snowblower for Phil. That's it's the be only awesome. time he's ever asked for anything. A snowblower. A snowblower this year. It is time because if he keeps shoveling, he's gonna die. Yeah, he's gonna fucking heart attack. Croak, big bro. time. That's that's a that's a lot. Because he's boozing when he's doing it. That's actually that's we'll how bring all. Bring out a beer. Yeah. I don't know if you guys know that when snow when landscapers plow and shovel, they're fucked up. Yeah. I used to, when I was an eighth grader, they used to scoop me and my cousins up. And my, oh, I hated that, dude. I had to go fucking like <clears throat> shovel and salt a neighborhood once. Yeah, dude. Oh. Did they get you drunk? No. Dude, they, not, there were people drinking, but I was just Yeah, dude. This was back this was after Spain. I came back, I was like yeah, dude, that's I'm not a working man. That's a tough van. I am not a working man. I loved it, dude, because it was like they would wait. I like salting. Salting destroys your fucking gloves. I dude. like salting. Nah, give me the shove. I would take a shovel. We have a good team. Dude, we put MGDs in the snow. We'd be smoking hash, getting fucked up. I would stay up all night. And then we would just, mm. this dude would bring us back to his house and he would get us pizza or whenever like we woke up, he would get us like whatever for food. And we would just like sleep in like our soggy little snow clothes. And then we'd have to go back out the next morning. I was like, dude, it felt like I was in the army. I'm like, this fucking rules. Yeah. Then I get an envelope of like 300 bucks and be like, oh. Yeah. And it's funny too because this guy was using us. And I mean, we were getting paid decently, but like, dude, this guy was probably getting. I mean, looking back yeah, on it, to, I was probably getting to like, like shovel and fourteen salt bucks in neighborhood. Especially when snow hits a certain part, like at a certain height, it becomes like I think it's like emergency levels. And dude, the money you it, the cost to plow it is so fucking much. Yeah, and dude, there's like these are like we're like eighteen, nineteen year old bulls, dude, just out there, just all night, yeah. just ripping, just stoked on fourteen dollars an hour. Fun times, the best. While it's snowing, that's nice. <laughs> oh, Out there dude. drinking. I told you the one time when Ajax was the boss, right? No. I never told you about this? No. Dude, so we were like, you know, I hadn't shoveled. I was out of the shoveling game for a while. Every now and again. You may so- remember Ajax from the Old Testament. Yeah. It's a guy who shot a goose. <laughs> a shot a goose with a bow and arrow. And strangled threw a, it. <laughs> threw a baseball bat in my head. The uh, oh, yeah, you poured water on him. Yeah, he was he was going to a job interview. <laughs> Tell it again, dude. Tell was, it again. This is for Old Testament. So dude. he was going to my cousin Ajax was going to a job interview at Wawa. <laughs> he, he fucking was wearing like his best tucked in Metallica t shirt, and he's all ready to go. We're like, Jax, come here. He's like, what? He <laughs> got a bucket of water and threw it on him. <laughs> Fuck. That's what he and threw. Then he went to the interview he, and drenched he, in a Metallica t-shirt. I think he might have changed his t- He might have oh. changed to like a fucking Megadeth, but he, he probably dude. had an alternate. But he fucking picked up a metal bat and just wung it at us, dude. I remember hitting the deck and this thing whizzed over us being like, Damn. reaction time. I was like, that's what's up. Um, <laughs> dude, but fucking... Uh, Ajax was leading the plow. Dude, so that, yeah, so then, like, so we used to, like, my brother, or, like, I guess it would be, like, my cousin-in-law or whatever, like, my cousin's husband, he was tapping us to, like, we were the soldiers that would come shovel, then, like, I was out of the game for a while, and then uh, I did it a couple times for Philadelphia management, and then, like, Ajax secured the fucking bag, dude. He got the contract by this this guy's name. <laughs> the guy's name who was like a, like subbing out to Ajax was called like I think like Van Helsing or something. Guy had like a weird ass <laughs> yeah, last yeah, name. Yeah. And I'd be like, he'd be like, guys, Van Mr. Van Helsing said he would round us all up, but we would do we would do like a shopping center in like Falkroft. It was like it which is like in the outskirts of Ridley. And it was just this like dumb fucking shopping center, and there was like one bar with saloon doors that like we would all just hide and like take dumps in. <laughs> like, like, so we would everyone bullshit it. No one did anything. <laughs> and we were like everyone would hide. <laughs> Nobody did any work. <laughs> oh, that would be so fun, dude. Ajax, hiding from him. Ajax would come back. Like, what the hell are you guys doing? Come on, he would like yell at us like, "Oh, you're sorry, dude. What the fuck? You're such a fucking slave driver, dude. Take it easy, <laughs> like, dude." No one did anything. <laughs> Everyone bullshit. Did Ajax him. lose the Van Helsing? <laughs> so, so we were sitting there, and then uh, Bob started, like, there was another guy there, and I think <sighs> the guy who was supposed to show up was, like, a big pillhead, 
And like his pop, my one my one cousin was like kept fucking with Ajax and being like, "Yo, I'll take his money. I'm gonna take his money." And he's like, I'm, he was saying something like making fun of the dude for being an oxy head and being like, yo, dude, I sold that guy perks. That's why he's not here. Like, just like fucking with Ajax. And he kept making fun of him. He's like, yo, dude, why isn't this guy showed up? He's a fucking junkie. And, like, and Jax ended up getting so fucking mad. He was like, Bob, go home. So he fired his brother. Wow. Fired Bob. <laughs> fucking Bob. I, th- I swear I've told this before. No. Bob drove home and then halfway called Jax. He was just making this up. He was like, Yo, Ajax, I fucking flipped over in a snowbank. <laughs> My car's flipped. I need help. <laughs> Ajax, like, I remember what he told us, like, dude, watch this. Ajax pauses and goes, well, that's your situation. You got to deal with it. We got to shuffle. <laughs> dude, the Van Helsing contract is all. It was, it was like there will be it blood. Line, it was there will be blood, dude. <laughs> it was an ocean of oil under his feet. And Ajax was the only one who could get it. <laughs> Dude, it is like there will be blood. You're like, is Bob okay? He's like, no, he is not. <laughs> Bob is deaf, dude. dude fucking, we, I've never phoned it in. So we would just walk around, just like go down. Like we would like you know be at the shopping center, and then I would like like I'll do the back steps, and I would just like lean on the shovel and just sit there and bullshit. <laughs> He'd come around like. What are we doing? Come on, we got Van Helsing's like this meanwhile <laughs> it's like Dr. Claw figure to make Jax, where are we at on the fucking on the bootlegger situation or like the bar or whatever it's called? Dude. Oh. Fucking Christ, that was so funny. It was like two days straight of fucking Ajax just slave driving us, dude. <laughs> no one doing anything. No one doing shit. And there was like a couple random like like other dudes like pill heads working there. Dude, it was just so funny, man. It was oh. so much fun. it was like me and all my brothers and cousins in a shopping center with shovels just fucking laughing the whole oh. time. And Ajax would come scoop us up in Van Helsing's van. <laughs> 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 that was so funny. <laughs> <Dude>. <laughs> <laughs> so fucking funny, dude. dude. Scooping up dudes in a van to work is fucking hilarious, dude. It was so fucking scooping funny. up dudes. Oh my god, getting the van full of dudes and rolling is so fun. <laughs> we got a mission. <laughs> it's just snow outside of a bar. Well, there's some like business tycoon who's like, yes, I control these contracts. Like, I need you to secure the forces. There's just a bunch of guys <laughs> who are like kind of stoned. It's like, all right, whatever. Nothing gets done. You're like, fuck. What's my business is failing. <laughs> Some dude's just fucking uh, big dick in the whole operation. Be like, yeah, I got my best guys on it. Oh man! Oh my god, that was the funnest fucking thing. Yeah, throwing was, throwing snowballs at cars. That's fun. It's a fun dude, snow operation. We should build a snowman in the middle of the street. Cars would stop. We have a snowman with a big dick on it. The cars would stop, and then you just pop out of the woods and be like, boom, 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 boom. <laughs> I remember oh, an oil oh. truck just fucking ran the snowman over, and we were like, what? <laughs> it was fucking awesome. Fuck, that would have been... The snowballs of Cars is... Snowballs of Cars is the best. Oh, yeah. Just you ever, the release, because ever... it's at night, so you throw it, you can't see it, you just hear a thud, and it's like, fuck. Oh, run. run. We used to do daylight. We used to have like, these tree covers, and you sit there, and it's like, boom, and just run into the woods. Do you ever catch... Do you ever be on the other end of that? No. Dude, I was on the other end of that. Yes, we've talked about. This. We talked about this. Yes, my old coworker, this is an Old Testament. Though. My old coworker got out of the truck and beat the fuck out of a kid. And I just sat there and was like, "Whoa, this is fucked." How he kind of like he like didn't like beat his ass. The kid was old enough. He was like fifteen or so. My coworker got out, and chased him down, a, catch a whoop. It wasn't even like it was like a slight whooping, but like a heavy whitewash where he dug his face in the snow <laughs> hard, mm. and the kid started crying. Mm. And then he's like, get the fuck out of here. Don't throw fuck. It's like someone had cracked his windshield before. Yeah, it's old. This is yes. No, we've had the exact. Because <clears throat> now then I told we had a snowball fight in our backyard. These little kids were building a fort. And then me and my friends ran out and fucked their fort up. That's while awesome. they're in it. But it, it was just a fun snowball fight. And then I just winged one and it hit this little kid. But I remember he was wearing glasses and the way it stuck was in the gla- like. The glasses, some of the glasses stayed on, and the snowball just popped him in the eye. He gave him like a pirate patch. He gave him full pirate patch, <laughs> oh. and he cried, and that ended it. And yeah. he went, out, and then I had to go apologize. That sucks. Yeah, they called my parents. Yeah, having to apologize to kids. Having sucks. to go back and apologize to like a five year old. Your dad make you do that? Yeah. Yeah. No, my mom. Oh, okay. Phil would have. My dad was a big forcing me to apologize, mm. like driving me to kids' house. Drive, yeah, I did drive to a kid's <clears> house <throat> after I punched him at the bus stop. Did you? Do you have to read a letter or just apologize? No, I just had to apologize. Shake hands. Couldn't believe it. That Couldn't believe sucks, it. sucks, dude. Yeah. How was the conversation on the way over there with Big Phil? Uh, I was with my mom. Your mom made you do that? Yeah. <clears throat> what was Big Phil's, Phil's never, thoughts? Phil's thoughts on me getting in fights was, did you win? Yeah. And that was it. That's what's up. That was it, it. I was more like, I remember I cried about getting bullied in like 
first or second grade and my parents were like stop basically like stop being a pussy deal with it yeah and i punched the kid and they were like that's what's up bro yeah and i was like hell yeah well i punched I, I beat up this kid for no reason and he was like as long as you win yeah there were other times i've got i got in fights like in the neighborhood and my dad would be like that was his question yeah did it's you like win? well what happened i'm telling you like all right <laughs> but my mom would be like you need to yeah it was one of those silent rides too Mm-hmm. Where you turn the radio off and you just drive over dead silence. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Mom, I said I was sorry. <laughs> we don't have to do this. <laughs> uh, that must have been so funny, her wrangling you as a little Fuck. kid. That was so fucking funny. Ringing the bell, though. That would have been so you're fun just, to watch. You're standing there, like, fucking kicking the stone on the thing. Just like, I'm sorry if I'm going to you. Yeah, I remember he was still crying. Really? When I got to the house, he was crying. He was probably crying about the same thing. He was probably like, Mom, don't make him come over and yeah, apologize. I just beat my fucking ass. Yeah. I don't know. I might be like, if I got my ass kicked, I'd be like, eh, apologies yeah. in order. Yeah, so you like, come over because I didn't suck a punch this kid at the bus stop for no reason. <laughs> oh, <laughs> no like, reason other than older kids told me to do it. That's a reason. They were like, you won't do it. And I, yeah. That's a reason, dude. I <laughs> fucking like behind him through a haymaker. <laughs> Oh my god! You cracked him. Yeah, punched him in the face from like the side. Oh, what happened? You fucking knockout gamed him. Yeah. So what happened to those older kids? I didn't rat. So they you just got in all the trouble. Did they yeah. were like that's what's up? I don't even I don't even remember the older kids saying anything. Dude, I went out to dinner with my brother Tom recently. I think they were probably they probably took off. Oh, for sure. Like holy fuck, he did. This guy fucking <laughs> just just wailed on a kid. <laughs> <laughs> my brother Tom was talking we were out to dinner with him recently and he was telling me about the time he got bullied <laughs> when he was in like third grade he said there was these dudes who were in like seventh grade or no they were eighth graders who were just torturing him he'd get on the bus and they'd be like faggot faggot <laughs> fuck you dude you're yes. a fucking bitch and just like we're crushing him constantly and he was like maybe he was in like fourth or so he was old enough where he could like observe the social situation and he saw that those kids like weren't the coolest baddest kids in the eighth grade he just went up to like the cooler kids in the eighth grade on his bus. This kid, like I think his name is Tommy Smith or something, was like, "Yo, fucking uh, Gary and them kept calling you guys gay." And he was just like, "What?" He's like, "Yeah." He, every time I talked to him, he's just like, "Yo, those guys are fucking gay." And like he said in the recess yard, those dudes beat the fuck out of that dude who was beating him up, and he was just like, "Fuck you guys." Wow, dude, I was like, "That's fucking wow. wild for a little who did kid." That? Tom. Damn. Kids were like four years older than him. Dishonest, he, Tom. Ma- he masterminded a fucking. Wow. He basically put fucking mastermind it like a hit on these kids wow because they were bullying him so much and he just like he was like i don't think these kids are even that cool and he found the cool kids and was like yeah that guy called you a faggot they all the stuff they're calling him he was just like yo they called you a faggot wow they're like who and they're like yeah I don't know. every time i see him i was like i don't know they just keep <laughs> and they do the fucking they just beat the fucking and then he said sick he, he went up and was like what's up pussies ah. i think they're just like fuck it dude he ended his bully fourth grade by setting up another kid to beat up the other i was like dude, that's fucking wow wild shit wow yeah, I was pretty happy hearing that. Oh, man. It's one way to do it. We should wrap it up. Yeah, just get the fuck out Um, of Yeah. Ah, uh, fuck. I'll be at Magoobies this weekend. Ooh. If any of you fuckers live near Baltimore, uh, that's the 26th, 27th, 28th, the day after Christmas, 26th. That'll be a light one at Magoobs. If you guys ever wanted to see me bomb, <laughs> I will bomb December 26th. You'll see a bunch of people in sweaters with their arms crossed. <laughs> yeah. See a bunch of tired people not laughing. Come see me. That'll be good. Uh, it's Christmas spirit. And then the 9th, 10th, and 11th, Helium Buffalo. January 9th, 10th, 11th, Helium Buffalo. Then January 16th, 17th, 18th, Stress Factory in New Brunswick. That's a good. That's a good tri-state tour, dude. Yeah, You'll yeah, be. Yeah. Oh, Buffalo's pretty fucking far. That'll be Buffalo, Baltimore, pretty, New Jersey. Pretty local, dude. That's yeah. good. That'll be good. Yeah, rally the dogs. Exactly, and you can kind of. Yeah. In terms of driving around to collect some checks. No, that's like, not bad. That's pretty tight. You're just. Um, you're just down North Carolina, bro. I'm just down North CAC. She. She. The dogs came out. It was fun. Oh, that was Dude was awful. rocking one of those McCosco shirts that's that so, I was wearing. So fucking funny. Where are they finding that? I forget. I, I forget the someone guy's else. Name. I forget uh, yeah. the guy's name. Oh, uh, it it's called like a uh, High Oregon or there's some sort of. Yeah, name. it's out west. Yeah, I gotta. If you're listening to this, that guy, DM me. Yeah, we gotta get more of those. People yeah, like those. Shirts. Fire those things up. Yeah. So I think he just took orders not too long ago on the Reddit or something. Oh, okay. It was like, yo, I have the last ones. Like, let's roll. Yeah. All right. Um. Hey, guys, have a Merry Christmas. Please do. You know? Please do. 
please. I have a sick interview coming up tomorrow, the day after Christmas, on the page. Surprise guest. It's going to be tight. Who? I'll tell you when we get done. It's going to be fucking sick. Any clues? I I mean, is this guy... I can't give you a clue. I, I have to tell you. Right. I don't want to betray... I don't know what information he wants to talk about. I have a couple... I have a couple of sick interviews coming up, and the one it'll be a re- I think it'll be a really. Good. I'm gonna do the one live. Usually, I do them through the phone. I'm gonna have a dude come in and talk. Really? To the studio. This dude's the man. All right, sick. Wild child. Sick. Yeah, I'll let you know. All right, later.